is so stupid it's positively brilliant. The brilliant is positively Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. Hey. First brilliant idiots back. No, second. second. We had the, we started oh, out with, with Sammy Duval. Davis yes, Duval. Yes, yes, Come yes, on, yes. Bro. I, haven't, I haven't got the chance. I got to listen to that one. Oh, dude, that's Jules, man. I, I've been disconnected. I'll tell y'all about that in a second. But uh, this week's podcast is brought to you by Toyota Untold 2019. New year, new ads, baby. Toyota isn't just a car company. And the new podcast, Toyota Untold, isn't just about cars, okay? It's about finding solutions. It's about sustainability, triumph, facing fear, celebrating life, and rethinking what's possible. In Toyota Untold, you'll hear behind-the-scenes stories about what drives the team members of Toyota and keeps them there for so long. From concept to production, you'll discover what goes into designing for the future. From advanced technology to the Olympics, space shuttles and natural disasters, discover how Toyota is rethinking mobility in the brand new podcast, Toyota Untold. You can find Toyota Untold right now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. So I'm assuming Toyota Untold is either a loudspeaker podcast or somebody in Chris's family is driving around in a nice new Toyota. Chris? Or both! Chris? It's a new sponsor on the show. New sponsor on the show? Okay. Okay. Just making sure. Just making sure, bro. I use Volvo. Though. If we see you uh, driving to those Lyme's disease appointments in exactly. a new Toyota, a Toyota. it's going to be a problem. Okay? Nothing to worry about. Um... Uh, also, please go out there and uh, continue to purchase my book, Shook One, Anxiety Playing Tricks on Me. Um, I had a great conversation with somebody yesterday because, you know, a lot of times when you plant these seeds, you don't realize, like, the fruit that it that it, that it it bears, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because you're just really, you're living your life. You're telling your experiences. You're, you're, you're speaking your truth. You're living your truth. Yeah. And But you don't realize the impact that these things are happening on people because right. I'm, I'm not... I'm just doing me, you know what I'm saying? But then I had a conversation with somebody and uh, they were talking to me ab- about the book and just, it's amazing when you have these these big companies who look at what you're doing and say, this is what I want to be involved in. And I'm not even talking, I'm not talking about like TV or the Give film me an example. industry. I'm talking about, tell me what, what happened. I'm talking about companies that can really change the world as far as like, Change, can can really help us eradicate the stigma of mental health. That can provide real services for people with, with mental health issues. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's just amazing. I'm just a little kid from Mount's Corner. Well, I'm not a kid. I'm 40 years old. But I'm just a, a young man from... I'm not young at all. I'm just a 40-year-old man <laughs> from Mount's Corner who, who was just... Living his truth. What is the company that can you talk I can't, about? Nah, I can't say. I can't say. Not yet. It's anyway. fair. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but soon. The Real point soon. is that you see the uh, reflection of your work. We, yes, and we have a chance to really, really, really create some change. There you know is. What I'm um, yeah, I was. Uh, I had this conversation with Duval, and um, it's really interesting how these things work out. And he has this amazing perspective on how he affects the world and how we can affect the world and. To me, how I looked at it is really how you continue living past your quote unquote death, right? Like we die in a physical form. Yes. But the way that we affect the world, we continue to live. When you create something that's bigger than you, when you create something that 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 outlives you. Sure, sure. And that that thing can be an idea, right? Like, for example, I remember I, I, I spoke on this podcast once of how my I developed confidence because my father would listen to me. Right. And he really made me value what I had to say. Mm -hmm. Right. And thought it was important. Right. And this guy DMs me and he goes, man, I have a son who's autistic and he just loves to talk all the the time. And I kind of like let him talk, but I don't really listen. I don't really pay attention. And he goes, after listening to that podcast with you and Charlamagne, where you you shared that, I started like listening with intention to my son and his situation has improved drastically. Wow. Like he's become more sociable and he's really changed who he was. I just really want to thank you, you for that. And I'm like, that's my dad, but my dad's an old man. He's losing his memory and all that kind of stuff, but he's still affecting the world through who he was. So yeah. like in a way he he's continues. Passed on, he passed on his jewels to you and you're keeping that tradition going. And it's like, it affects all these people. And like here, seeing how you can affect the ecosystem, you know, to be honest, what you're doing with mental health right now, that's affecting the ecosystem. That's like in the fucking earth, you know? So it's like, it's we'll, just we'll, such we'll, a great. We'll, we'll, we'll never, we'll never truly see 
the 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 impact we may have had on people. But but that's where you got to sit there and re- that's what flipped it, right? Like and and I'd been I'd been a stickler for credit so much earlier in my career and it was probably because I didn't have success. You know, once I started like having my idea of success which was like, you know, accomplish the things that I wanted to do and creating, right? Mm-hmm. And I started to care less about credit. And then I had this convo with Duval and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm used to not getting any credit. Like, this is new to me. Smile Bitch is brand new. I'm used to being overlooked my whole time. So I started to find joy in seeing the positivity I would put out in the world. Yeah. Seeing the kind of change. And you it's know what's like, interesting? Uh, Duval's a great case study. You know, Duval's a great friend of mine. Love the brother. Uh, Duval didn't give himself a lot of credit because sometimes when you're that talented, when you're... That genius, I know people like to say, oh, you throw the word genius around. No, no, he's I, genius. I, I think he's genius. He's you genius. know what I'm saying? Undoubtedly. But, but, Undoubt. but, but when you're that talented and you have that level of genius, you tend not to work as hard as everybody else because it just comes to you. Like, he used to say that all the time. He used to be like, this shit ain't on, this shit ain't, uh, on me, it's in me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. When it's yeah. in you, you tend to take it for granted. But this is the first time I've seen Duval actually work. And like, no, like actually yeah, yeah. work, like actually take the credit of, you know, to, to give himself credit yeah, for yeah. creating something and then going out there. But he knows he knows what he's creating. He knows what he's been doing for years. He, this is just the first time it's been like acknowledged. And like for me and you, probably we see this massive success and it justifies us believing in our friend. Like all these yeah, years, we'd be like, always. "Man, we knew this motherfucker yeah, is the truth." Late. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, it. I it's just it's just amazing a shift in perspective and what that can do. Like when you see, like even when, when when I see like the term hezzy, right? We could say how, my effect on that word or not, mm-hmm. you know. But like when I see that shit in video games. Now and I see like just announcers saying it. I'm just like, yo, we played a role in that. Like you we better, created you, a. You better go sue these motherfuckers. Like that. Shiggy them doing yeah, it. You're Fortnite. Right, you're right. Go you're get right. that goddamn money. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> NBA 2K. I'm coming. If there's a check there to be got, get yeah. it. But well, I'm I mean, saying it's like it's amazing what. Yeah, but I mean it's funny. Like Duval, Duval created Basic Bitch, right? Dude, I, I, I'll be I'll be laying in bed. Right, this happened recently. I'm laying in bed with a girl. And I'm like, why aren't you? Why aren't you gonna do that? Why wouldn't you just wear that? And then the girl will go. It's always like a white girl will be like, eh, it's just basic. I'm not gonna do that. And I'm like, and I smile myself. I'm like, you know, a friend of mine invented that term. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, that is he literally fact. invented the term. I remember the tweet. I can tell you what year it was. It was 2009. Yeah, because I was doing radio in Philly. Because I remember laughing, walking out the radio station, looking at my Twitter, and him tweeting out something like, um, "You really want to piss the girl off." call her basic and then the next week was like basic bitch yeah. and literally that shit just took Look. off the, 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 the white girl who used to rap from oakland i can't remember her name oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. C- C- don't, don't charge yourself trying yeah I, I can't remember her name Cray Cray Sean. Cray Sean. yeah yeah, yeah she yeah, put yeah, it yeah. in a song he and said, i remember quiche <laughs> <laughs> and i remember interviewing her on breakfast club saying like yo you know duval invented that term and she was like hey, ain't do nothing with it and that became the running joke with Between, Duval. Yeah, Duval, yeah, would, yeah. Duval would be like, what that mouth do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you ain't going to do nothing with that? Watch this. You know what I did to Duval? I told him this. He knows this With now. the shirts, right? I only, I, I, I ordered 15. Not even yeah. 15. Maybe it was like 10. It might have been less than that. It might have been like five. It yeah. wasn't a lot. <laughs> and I wore one. Yeah. And I was like, yo, got these, what these mouth do shirts for sale. And he was like, Man, what you doing, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, you ain't gonna do nothing with it. And, and I'm like, yo, find out, yo, create something else for us to get paid off real quick. <laughs> and that made him go out there and do his own shit. Bro, you know what I'm saying? There's a there's something about creatives. I'm sure you probably feel this way as well, but like when you're when you're an innovator, like when you're unique, right? And you create something that's different because you're ahead of the curve, the second other people start copying you, you almost reject your own creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah. I'll have jokes. Other comics will kind of like bite the joke in a similar way. The second I see that, yeah. I stop doing my own joke because I'm like, nah, I can't be associated with yeah, yeah, what yeah, everybody and, and, else and is doing. And you don't want nobody to think that you're imitating them. Exactly. Yeah. Even though you bit my dick you first. You bit it. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, no, and I'm just, you definitely have done this, right? Like, what, you definitely. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> 
Was that the tarot cards? <laughs> <laughs> less teeth. What if she flipped over the tarot cards and she said, less teeth, more lips? <laughs> but you said you've done what before? But uh, I'm saying you you must have like created something or like started something on oh, the yeah, radio, yeah, yeah, etc. Yeah, 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 and then yeah, you yeah. see other people doing it and you're like, can I even still do this? Are they going to think that I'm copying these kids, yeah. you know, on Instagram or some shit like that? So I understand his reluctance to like monetize it or do something right away. But on some level, as like a creative that's in the space where you, you're you making your living off of it, you got to monetize your shit. You have to. You owe it to why, yourself too. Why? why wouldn't you? Why not get the money? Why let someone else get the money? Especially in this era. This yeah. is 2019. It can be direct to consumer. Why wouldn't you create a phrase, Yeah, yeah. trademark that phrase, put it on some t-shirts and sell it? Why yeah. wouldn't you, you know, if you got these jokes for stand-up, why wait and be like, oh, I'm going to wait. I got this joke and I'm mm-hmm. only going to tell it in these comedy clubs. Like, why wait? To, for, oh, they, somebody's going to give me a special? Why? Just put it here. Yeah, dude. Here's my joke. All right? Who gives a shit? You know, and I, and I felt like that. I honestly felt like that with my second book. I was saying, like, you know, because it's, it's, it's selling great. You know, it's been out two months, and, you know, it was selling great, but it didn't make the New York Times bestsellers list like the, like the first one. Yeah. And the first one was on the New York Times bestsellers list for seven weeks. And I'm like, oh, the numbers aren't adding up. But then you come to find out later on that the New York Times bestsellers list has nothing to do with actual bestsellers. Like, it's all type of other politics and Chris, you probably know better than I do. Like, well, well, the big biggest factor is what other books are coming out that week, and you, yours came out a week. I think Michelle Obama's was, two weeks before Michelle. Before, but there was a lot of other stuff out. Uh, Kobe's that week. Kobe was, was just, that week. Yeah, it was a heavier week. But the the fact is, nobody knows what drives the New York Times list. There's no formula that you can plug in to make it. So that discredits it to me. Oh, very. Oh, I just, uh, Ryan Holiday Ben sent me an article about how I can't remember who wrote the article. It actually came out this year, and they and they was we need call, a metric. They was calling the New York Times bestsellers this BS because I forgot whose book it was. Jordan but, Peterson. Was it Jordan Peterson? He had, a, he had the number one book in the world and wasn't the New York Times bestseller. I think list. it was Jordan Peterson because yeah. he was he was he was number one on the USA Today and the Washington Journal, yep. right. but didn't get credited on the New York Times bestsellers. And I think their, it was Jordan. Their Peterson. argument was that it wasn't uh, produced by an American publisher. But they've put mm. books on the New York Times bestseller list that haven't been uh, published by an American publisher before. Again, there's politics. They don't the count shit. religious books. Right. I mean, like Amazon is a pretty... Yo, because that Quran been accurate. selling. Right. Oh, come that on. That shit been come selling, on. Even, the, the That's Bible number be, one every the week. The Bible would be number one every week. <laughs> if, but, but I'm saying all that to say, I'm saying all that to say, I was looking at that list for validation, right? But, that, but the, the book has had more impact. You know what Sorry. I'm saying? Then, then black privilege. Even though black privilege sold a lot of copies and it's num- num- been was num- on New York Times bestsellers seven weeks. What are New York Times bestsellers the seven weeks in a row? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad it's not like that. My Audible book, but the fucking, yeah. but Shook ones has sold just as much, but it's had more impact on people's actual lives. You're shifting the frame. Yeah, you're recognizing like as as Duo puts it, you're recognizing your own programming, like. You were yearning for the validation of this of this book of sorry of, of this like New York Times thing because you felt that that would make you a good book writer. I thought that's what I thought that's what that's what dictated success. Exactly, you know but that's saying? just reaching out, right? It's like that's what we do in our careers probably right now. Is like we reach out. What else can I have that validates me for who I am? And yeah. I think sometimes like God or the universe, like when we're not grateful for what we have, Ooh. He lets you to fuck no, dog. Yeah, He's like hundred percent. He He literally. He'll tap you and be like, stop asking for more. You got a lot. Yeah, Sit uh, back uh, and be grateful for this shit. You're right. And you're going to get some more. Like, if you notice, know Smile Bitch, with, with Duval, that, you know that shit came out after Duval was like, I'm good. I'm going to go to the Bahamas. I'm going to hang yeah, out. Yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah, anything yeah. more in my life. My life is good. And God was like, ooh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Now, now, now this one's, now this one's I got, major. I got more for you to do. Boom. Yeah. I'm not, I, I get what you're saying. 100%. But that's a bigger thing in life with a lot of people. Like, like... You know, I think they're so funny. I think Kobe just had his like fourth girl or something like that. And yeah. you know, he wants a son so bad. And I think that's, I think on some level, that's God just going, hey, you get it when I decide, but you need to be grateful for these four beautiful girls. Yo, my last two, my last two girls, I wanted to be sons, right? Yep. And then, and then I'm like, I'm not having no more kids. You know, I I really don't, I don't I don't want to like my wife's older like we're not we're not doing that yeah, like, yeah, yeah. every every pregnancy gets harder and harder yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying and so it's like we're your not wife having, in shape though she look like a superhero bro yeah she she could shape. have another kid that's like yeah but we're not gonna do that I don't I don't want to do that I think I think that would be selfish and plus I had to look at it right I got this tribe of women I got yes. three daughters a beautiful wife 
anytime you see Charlemagne out and about, more than likely I'm with more women than guys. I don't right. have a lot of guy friends like that. So it's just like, this is my life. This is what I'm comfortable around. You know what I'm saying? So why wouldn't God give me what I'm comfortable around? You or, know what I mean? Or why wouldn't why wouldn't he go, hey, you need to appreciate how amazing this is that you got here. And if something's in the cards in the future, we'll get there after you learn to appreciate how great this is. Yeah. And like, then, you, here's this abundance right here. Yeah. If this ain't enough... It's never gonna be. I'm 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 more than ecstatic. And I remember somebody saying to me when I had my first daughter, matter of fact, my man Hassan Torre, salute to Torre, Torre Design, Torre I know said, Torre. Yeah, Torre yeah. was like, yo, daughters are a blessing. He was like, yo, watch when you have your daughter, like your your life is just going. Phew. And he's right. And every every single one, from my oldest to the middle child to the third one. And it's just like I'm watching that just all all have different, unique personalities and like I'm like last night I'm sitting with my daughter and she's um she's reading a book about Nelson Mandela because she's doing a a book report about Nelson Mandela and I'm like oh that's dope because you know you get to say that you actually was in Johannesburg and I was like yo did you take did we take pictures in the apartheid museum I couldn't remember she was like nah but I took a picture um you know in front of his statue, statue. at the Nelson yeah, Mandela yeah. Mall and she was like I'm gonna use that for the cover I'm like oh that's <laughs> hot they can't yeah. fuck with you yeah, like, you're, I, like you know what I'm saying they can't you're fuck with content. you <laughs> come on you in fucking fifth grade with a picture I was, I was just dead like, what y'all talking about light work yeah, please. light work I'm <laughs> Africa please I was dead so I mean like yo stuff like that but that's what you that's appreciation that's gratitude like I'm happy for what I'm able to do for my family and I'm I'm, I'm happy that I have a family that's why these these people who like we think are successful are often miserable Mm. Right, it's because they're just reaching, they're mm. constantly reaching, mm. and they don't realize what they already got behind them. You know what I mean? It's like I think even in my career, like once I sat there and I was like, "Man, I'm so fucking lucky!" Like I truly am in love with what I'm doing. Like I'm in love with what I'm doing. All of a sudden, I really start to have like blessings happen to me, man. Because gratitude I, should be your attitude. When yeah. you're thankful for what you have, you get blessed. More. And it's hard to like tell people that tell people something and like have them like really truly resonate with them but yeah it's hard to just say but like i i think that if you like look at what's happened i don't know like just to the little things that, that we've been you know going on and these little things that happen like once i stopped really like craving and reaching 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 and just doing what i am being so grateful for what i had all of a sudden shit starts to blow up man. It's been man. Cool. my motto 2019 you know, uh, I refuse to stress anything that I cannot control. Like, I, like, I guess, like, you know, suit to Ryan Holiday. I love Ryan. I love yeah. uh, Stoic Wisdom. He talks about the big three. The big three is um, control your perceptions. You know, uh, when, it, when it comes to action, you know, make sure your actions are, are positive. You right. know what I'm saying? Take right. direction with your actions. And the third is willingly accept the things that you cannot control. Sounds what are we stressing about, baby? Like, it's just some things we can't. What is we that line control. in the Bible? God give me the strength to. Well, that's not in the Bible, but they're talking about the Serenity Prayer. That's God not in the grant... Bible. No. Who God... invented that shit? That shit slaps. That's just fire. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that one? Nah. Yo. God, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change. No. God grant me the serenity to accept, accept the, the things, things I cannot I change. change. Courage, courage to change, change the things I can, can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That's not in the Bible. Who wrote that one? Was in the Bible? Who? Who? The American theologian. Reinhold Niebuhr. Never Damn. heard of him. I don't know, bro. Never heard of him. But all I'm saying is that's the truth. Remember your serenity prayer, bro. I'm not scratching right. about nothing I can't change. Like nothing I can't control. Like once things are out yeah. there, they out there. Whatever. So here's the next level to it. One, you don't let it stress you, right? The other is you look for the positive message in it. That's where your fucking mind starts I just, to blow. I just sat with this. I just sat with this woman, and she was doing the tarot cards, and like she was telling me that she was like, "My life is a whirlwind, and it's just all types of things around me." But she said, "There's gold in the chaos." She said, "You've always found the gold in the chaos." I think your comfort zone is the chaos. Actually. I don't know any other way. Yeah. When I it, yo, it never fails. You know what I did this week? Uh, December twenty seventh, mm -hmm. we flew to Anguilla, mm -hmm. right? Turn my phone off when you get on the flight like everybody should do. I put it in my, my wife's bag. I didn't go near my phone for 12 whole days. I still haven't gotten on social media. As of right now, we, we're taping this on a Tuesday. What's today? January 8th? Whatever. I haven't been on my I haven't been on social media since December 27th that morning at the airport. Right. 
on Sunday, I finally turned my phone back on. I was I was texting, you know, uh, looking at the email, stuff like that, taking calls, whatever. I didn't do none of that for 12 motherfucking days. I disconnected. Yeah. Totally. That right there reconnected me with my motherfucking spirit. But it didn't make my memory any better because I forgot what the fuck you was talking about. <laughs> We're talking about how you could... Take something that is perceivably negative and find the positive oh, spin in it. Oh, boom. So every time I go off to Anguilla, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. it never fails. Like, and, and so it was so interesting to be out of the loop because, you know, Van is there. Salute to my brother Van. And Van is like telling me stuff that's going. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, he's like. Because like, he hasn't checked out. <laughs> no. And I'm like, I, I, I had no. He's like, yo, this R. Kelly shit is crazy. Yeah, I'm like, what yeah. the fuck are you talking about, bro? Yeah, 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 and he's like, yo, the day we were leaving. He's like, uh, yo, Monique just posted some old tweets to yours. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Don't tell me about that shit. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then he's telling me some other stuff. And I'm like, it never fails. When I disconnect and I, I, I go on vacation, as soon as I come back home, the whirlwind starts. So it's like when I'm on vacation, it's like I'm super comfortable. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm content. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like... All right. Yeah. She feels a little too go. good to be yeah. true. It's a you little too saying? quiet. Up. So when it starts getting back, when I'm like, okay, what did I tell y'all when y'all sent me the group text when I got back on Sunday? What was it? I'm like, shit, I guess they missed me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I said, good, they must know I'm coming back. Let's go. Like, so it's like what I like. I, I don't know why I exist comfortably when it's chaos. Maybe, maybe at some point in my life, I'll get to the point where that, 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 that isn't the case anymore. Mm -hmm. But I really don't know how to maneuver without resistance. So there's like, maybe that's the next part of your life, man. Like the way I look at my life right now, I, I see it in a, a few different phases. So this phase right now, I'm trying to achieve everything that I want, not what people think that I should achieve or whatever mm. the expectation is for my career, but truly what I want. I'm trying to achieve everything and I'm still grasping for these things. But the next stage, the last third of my life, my old man stage is going to be trying to master nothing. Trying to wake up and go, I don't need to get everything done today. I can just enjoy the day. I'm there now, bro. No, and, and listen, I and I admire that. I'm just saying like that, instead of looking at as retirement, instead of looking at getting old as this like sad thing, you just got to dwindle until yeah. you die. I'm going to look at it with the same level of mastery that I've looked at podcasting or stand up where it's like, I want to get good at this. I want to get good at just enjoying a fucking you day. That's your craft. Exactly, and that that craft is life, and accepting the existence that is fucking life, that's man. A, that's how I feel. I want to be the best father. I want to be the best husband. You know what I'm saying? And everything else falls into play. That's it. Everything yeah. else is like, all right, cool. Like, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to always come in here and execute my best on these podcasts. I'm always going to execute great at radio. I'm gonna always have you know great ideas for content for TV, whatever, whatever. Ultimately, I'm going to do my late night show. I'm going to do my daily show on TV. Like that. Like that's going to happen. Right. But guess what? Yeah. All that is secondary. What if it didn't happen? I'm fine. I won already. Good. When the clock struck, 2019. Good. Because that's when all that <laughs> stuff will come. <laughs> But know what I'm saying? Like that's when all that stuff will come. I want. I can. I, I'm already yeah. home. I can't explain it no other Boom. way. I want. I. I. I won. Like if I had to go back and look at my long term goals and my short term goals, and I look at ten years ago, the things that I wanted to accomplish. Yeah. I want. I'll show it to you. I would tell you. I'm going yeah. to be a nationally syndicated radio. Did you say anything past that? Yes. What'd no. You well, well. Um. I mean, we've had this conversation in the past. I remember what you said. No. Well. Okay. That's an interesting question. Everything I'm doing now, I said I was going to do. Exactly. The books, the the, the, the TV shows, like the, the everything. Like yeah. I, I said I was going to do, like none of this is like something so, that's just happening. So stop there, right? Okay. Like you set out what you wanted to do mm -hmm. and you did it. Yes. Right? Everything else that happens afterwards is gravy. But if, and you realize that there are some people that don't. There's some people that are like, I need to get a TV show to be validated. Yeah. I need another bestseller to be validated. I need, 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 need. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And that's yeah. when I think the universe or God or whatever checks you. That's when I think the universe is like, yo, motherfucker, you realize you wrote down what you wanted? And you got it. And you it. got it? Yeah. And you still upset that you don't got Absolutely. more? Absolutely. How dare you? Absolutely. You know, and it's like, I think 
as long as you know that you literally achieved what most people think is impossible and you wrap your head around the fucking wild success of that. I said I to do what I Everything said I wanted to do. Everything is icing, bro. You yeah. already got the cake. Yeah, I always said I said I want to be I want to be to I want to I want people to look at me the way I used to look at Tom Joyner, Doug Banks, you know what I'm saying? Done. Angie Already Martinez, happened. Established. You know, like like I, those legends like that. Even Wendy, Wendy Williams, even though, you know, she don't fuck with me or whatever, but it's still, I, I look at, like, those are the yeah. icons to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I just wanted to be that. Now, I'm not saying I'm, not saying I'm an icon. I just know that Absolutely a, lot of kid, a lot of kids in this generation, when they writing down their theses and what they want to do, they like, I want to have a career like Charlie. Absolutely so, an yo, icon, yeah. Thank you, God, is all I can tell y'all. You know, and I'm happy and content. And I, I, I would encourage all of y'all to to disconnect. <coughs> Dave Yo. Chappelle gave me that advice when I was in uh, Johannesburg. Yeah, and me and me and Dave were just talking, and he was just like, "Yo, there's only one, there's only one way to stay sane in this business." He said to disconnect, mm -hmm. and that's the truth. Yo, disconnecting the past 12 days has been the best thing for me. I have never felt more mentally healthy. I can't tell you when the last time I felt this mentally healthy. And it made me realize that I don't need the validation of anybody. Because truth be told, we all say we don't give a fuck what people think about us. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Because if we truly didn't give a fuck what people thought about us, we wouldn't be on social media. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We want to feel <laughs> like, connected. We want to know what people are thinking. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And like, I, I, honestly, I've been back since Sunday. I have no desire to yeah. go on social media. You know what it is? Like? It's like a diet. Like the first week is hard. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then after that first week, you're like, all right, I don't need Oreos. I don't need, you know, bread. I don't need that kind of shit like that. But the first week you miss it. So it's like getting over that over that hump. Absolutely. But you got to be very intentional with your attention. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that's not what we're doing enough but, of. But don't cut people out. Like, I think I love connecting with people and I love the access that Instagram has has given us. It's just if it's done with the light of, yo, I'm trying to spread some joy. I'm trying to spread some joy and laughter through this I shit. I just want to do it when I want to exactly. do it. Exactly. A lot do of it us think you need we to have feel it. Exactly. A yeah, lot of us yeah. think we have free will. We don't. Y'all motherfuckers is really just moving the way social media moves. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a part of that shit. Like, I don't want to feel right. like I'm in the Matrix, bro. Like, I don't want to feel like my thoughts and my opinions are not my own. Like, here, you, I want you to care about this right now, Andrew. You better yeah. comment. You better respond. And people will hit you and be like, yo, How do you when you going to talk about this? Yeah, yeah. When you going to talk about that? I don't want to. But here's the thing, Charlotte. You are in the Matrix. You just got to decide if you're one of those people walking down the street or if you're Neo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. So... That's up to you and that's yeah. up to your perspective. Yeah. There are people walking down the street and they're going to feel a certain way. And we have to we have to respect it. A lot of people are just walking down the street and that's cool, right? One of the trickiest things for me is when I see someone walking down the street and I'm trying to let them know that the matrix exists and they're in the matrix and they don't want to buy into it. I'm yeah. like, that frustrates me, but I got to let go of that. I got to let, let go. motherfuckers walk. Yes. I can't try to make everybody kneel. Somebody just, uh, the one, one I got to, Another reading. I got a reading today, but somebody else gave me a reading a few weeks ago, and they told me the exact same thing. They was like, you have to learn to relinquish control. She was like, you're the person who gets upset because you want to lead the horses to water. These are her exact words. You mm -hmm. want to lead the horses to water, and then you get mad when they don't drink. She was like, you cannot force them to drink. Yeah. You cannot force them to come to this to drink the water. And I was like, yo, you're absolutely right. That's why 2019. Mm -hmm. You willingly have to accept the things that you cannot control. You know I'm what you gotta it. do, bro. You just you niggas gotta, die. You die. Yo, <laughs> it also you just gotta drink the water yourself. And then when you drink the water, and people are seeing how satiated you are and how delicious the water looks, yeah, 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 they're yeah. gonna go, "I want some of that water." Why? Like, listen. Why are we tripping? We got our tribes, bro. <laughs> We know who the squad is. That's you know what it. I'm saying? We know who we go. We know who we talk to. Like, why are we, what are we tripping for? I'm not searching for nobody else. I'm doing my thing. And if you want to come and enjoy this, we here. I'm creating content for my people. We here. Do you know what I mean? And all of us, and that's what we're doing right now. So it's like, and if people want to jump on board, God bless. But to be, yeah, to be completely honest, there's a lot of people that are just every single day telling you how to live. And it's kind of useless, man. Bro. It's kind of useless. Just do it. Just like know. Gary V has way more influence just being successful than he does every day telling people that's what why, to do. But that's why they listen to him. Well, they only listen because he's successful. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. that, and that's why I realized I got to be a millionaire this year. Like, I got it. I never cared about money. Like, I just never uh, un, uh, above a certain amount. 
But I realize I got to make a lot of money this year because of the leverage that it will give me, right? Like, because I got tons of ideas. Muhammad Ali said that. What was the Muhammad Ali quote where he was like, you have to, like, he he shows the money in the cars and stuff because he knows people listen. I want to, that might have been. It's some, true. Like, if that might have been some Instagram shit. No, nah, but like. That might have been a little boosie and <laughs> nah, credited to Muhammad but, Ali. But yo, real oh, talk, no. <laughs> it's like, what what is that guy's name in that, like, Wild Wild West or whatever documentary on Netflix, the Rajneeshis, Osho was his name. He was like this, like, Buddhist, uh, like, you know, preacher guy, whatever. Yeah. But he had like 25 uh, uh, Rolls, Royce. Rolls Royces, right? And it's he probably I'm understood. All ears. Yeah, exa- boom. Tell me more, yo, son. <laughs> you you know what this shit is though? It's like, and I never realized this, right? Maybe because I came from privilege, but also like I always value value talent. Like I'm prejudiced as fuck when it comes to talent. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the all the people around me, talented as fuck. That's undeniable, yeah. right? So it's like w- w- when I so when I see you, I don't care how rich you are. I'm like, this guy is Charlamagne is talented. I didn't even know that you were on the fucking morning show when we first mm-hmm. met, right? I just saw the the thing for, for Guy Code. I saw the preview episode, mm-hmm. and I just noticed. I was like, who's that guy? He's good. I listen to Hot 97. I'm born and raised in New York. That's mm-hmm. what everybody listened to, mm-hmm. right? So it was like, I just was drawn to it. Same with Duval, same with these different people, right? I didn't care about money, but now I realize how much it, how much importance that is to people because- Just success in general. No, 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 no. It's specifically money, right? Because money- for most people, accumulating wealth is the hardest thing in the fucking world. Yeah, so when they yeah, see yeah, somebody yeah. who's accumulated massive wealth, they go, well, shit, he must have it figured out because he just did the hardest thing that I could ever imagine, become a million, whatever. So while I don't give a fuck about money or, or over a $150,000, like I, it doesn't make a difference. My life between making half a million a year and $150,000 never changed. There's been years I made 150. There's a year I made half a million. No, but never change. What, when that shit hit a million, it's gonna change. Oh, oh, maybe. Real talk. That maybe. Shit feels great. No, no, I bet it. <laughs> yo, yo, son, I bet, I bet, I bet, absolutely. But I like, felt like a millionaire. I mean, I, I listen, I'm doing good in life. But this year, I felt like a millionaire. Yeah, you had scandal. I've had people a few of coming, those. people I've, coming I've, for I've, you. Yeah, I've had a few of those. But I'm talking I must about be like rich. when the clock struck. When the exactly, but when the clock struck 2019. Yeah, yeah. It's there, baby. Like I, yeah. I'm just saying, like, you bro, know? I'm I'm with you. I'm just saying, like, I've realized the leverage that gives you. Like when I say shit, like when I say shit about the stand up comedy world now, because people have seen me have success in it without like the help of networks or anything like that, and they see all these comics that are you know replicating my formula and stuff like that, and they should. I'm not knocking it, but like now all of a sudden, what I say carries weight. But it only carries weight because they've seen me sell out shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've yeah, seen yeah. the album number one. Yeah. They've seen all that. So they go, oh, shit, he's made money. What Maybe I should listen to him. What he's doing is actually profitable. Boom, exactly. Yeah. But before, I had the same ideas. So your idea, like Elon Musk. Hear your broke ass ideas. No, Elon Musk not the smartest guy. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, the yeah. richest smart guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeff Bezos from Amazon, not the smartest guy. He's the richest, right? So I realized I got to be a multimillionaire just so I could validate I, just so I could justify these ideas to other people, just so I could spread that positivity to the world, you know, yeah. like why do you care about the opinions of people who ain't got shit? That's the problem with social I, motherfucking but, media. But you said I the illest shit yesterday. What what I say yesterday? You said <laughs> you said all these motherfuckers all they got is social media. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When <laughs> yeah, I was like, let, you're you're a missed phone bill away from not having an opinion anymore. <laughs> Like we really Come on man We really giving you value Like you tweeted me Like you missed that Fucking Verizon payment Where's Like you on? are done Like give nobody a give a what fuck What you talking about I don't give a fuck What you talking about You know why Because all of these Motherfuckers Online Always know what to do With other people's money They always know what to do With other people's positions But you ain't even figured out What to do with your own shit yet You can always tell Charlamagne What he should have said What he should have done You can tell Andrew What he should have said Hindsight 2020 done. Like but you ain't done you, you haven't done shit With your existence yet So fuck you We ain't got nothing to say We ain't got nothing to talk about mm-hmm. At all mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. And I'm gonna tell you something else Since we're talking about being controlled Stop watching Bird Boxes That shit is trash Oh, you didn't like Bird Box? That shit was trash. I really liked it. No, you didn't. I thought it was really good. Deadass. Really? Deadass. I thought it was really good. I 
hated Tell that Tell me shit. why. I didn't hate it. Yeah, it yeah. had its moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the end was like, oh, come on. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> I mean, that like, was very predictable. On. I thought of that from the beginning. I was like, yo, these yo, blind people killing it right we now. Was, yo, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said the same that we was watching it because we were watching yeah, yeah. it in Anguilla. Yo, and, <laughs> we should redo a sketch where instead of blind people like afraid of seeing the thing, they just walking around all with their canes like in, I, the, in the grocery store. We're watching it, right? It's like 10 of us watching it. I'm like... Stevie Wonder is flourishing in this world right now. I'm like, where the fuck is Stevie, right? <laughs> they every superstition. No, who's that? Is that Stevie? That's Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> what, you couldn't see it? So, listen, the, 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 so, 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 so at the end, I'm like, so at the end of the, the at, when the world's said and done in the future, it's going to be blind people and mentally disabled people who run the world? Wait, why disabled, mentally disabled people? Because if you were mentally disabled... They, yeah, they, they, that's why they could see. That's why they weren't never went crazy. You didn't get that. You didn't understand that. You didn't realize that everybody that that didn't go crazy was was mentally disabled. Spoiler. No, what do you mean? You mean like the guys that the people that were riding around in the BMW who was trying to get everybody to see? Oh, the they guy, were mentally disabled. They explain that in the movie. What they say? I missed that <laughs> one. <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> that was the whole thing. Like if you were if you were mentally disabled, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's. I don't know what you would call it. I, you know, I don't want to just mentally disabled in some way yo you you mean the dude that was in the house with them was mentally ill how he seemed normally seemed english he was just no, talking to people that's why he went crazy in the house and started opening up the windows and was like look see he's the one who explained it to all of them yeah, yeah. so he said if you're mentally disabled he like, said something i don't know the exact rhetoric but he said something like that he was like if you're suffering from some type of Mental disability, you 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 won't be affected by it or something like that because they already see the world for what it is. I forgot exactly how. Go, like, tell me how did it break it down? It goes. Get on the what? mic, Taylor. Your first mic appearance in 2018. Okay. Boom! Yeah, it's, it's 2019. Thank you. I, I do better with this. So, the one thing that Bird Box's climax makes clear though is that these creatures are able to read minds and assume the voice of whatever person there would be victim would be most susceptible to. That's why Sandra Bullock's character, Mallory, hears the voice of, uh, well, this is when she was in the, uh, which one call it, so. So if you're already hearing voices and stuff like that, it can't affect you. Yeah. You're already hearing voices. You're already seeing wild stuff, so it couldn't affect them. That's why everybody who wasn't, was either blind, the people who weren't, who. Blind or schizophrenic blind is, or something I like guess, that. yeah, like some type of mental disability. It says that Bird Box is a story about a woman overcoming severe depression and learning to feel hope and connect with others once more. Yeah, that's what I understood about the movie. Severe depression? I don't remember that part. Like, for example, she's she's pregnant, right? But the first scene, this is what I took from the movie. It's about reconnecting with society and like having love for people. And I think what happens is like, so she was scorned by a dude or men. Exactly yeah, right? So it's like she's scorned by a dude or man, right? This guy left her, even though she's pregnant, all this shit. And the first scene, she's like in a room painting by herself. She doesn't want to even hang out with her own mother. Yeah. Her sister's the only person that's there, right? And she's realized that like the only way that she can, she thinks the only way she can survive is by completely isolating herself from all connection to people, right? She doesn't even name the daughter a name or the son a name it's just boy and girl and that's her way of protecting herself in case they die because if she acknowledged them as her children ooh like a loving them would hurt her would hurt her because yeah, yeah, what yeah, happened yeah, to her yeah. in the past loving yeah. that man that she got pregnant with he ran away I and that. the people leave you so that hurts you and then the movie There's was a black this guy that's always there to take care of a white woman <laughs> with kids that's another thing. Like, it's always oh, a black oh, man. Oh, oh sell out ass, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm sitting there watching it. My homegirl, Ashley, was there. Salute to Ashley. Ashley from Charlton. Ashley, like, boy, black men love playing house, boy. These niggas love playing house with other people churn now. <laughs> so, so, real quick. So, real quick. So, so I think what, what the movie is trying to tell us is that in order to feel part of something and connected and whole, right? you need to take the risk of being hurt. And the risk of being hurt was going, hey, your name is Tom and your yeah. name is Jasmine or whatever and I love you and I'm willing to put myself in the line of fire yeah. to connect with people. Like Connecting with the world is painful and there's a lot of people that like are alone, they're on their phones and they're not talking to anybody throughout the day and I think the movie is basically saying, hey, yeah, it could be painful, it could hurt, but... It's worth it because of how loving human connection can well, be. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I didn't. I, they didn't tell us what the fuck these things were. 
Right, which I thought was kind of dope. I like that. But are they good? Are they evil? So are they, they killing aliens? everybody? Are they, they biblical? They like, well, can I say something? <laughs> they weren't killing everybody, though. How? <laughs> That's the sole threat. There was no black women in the future. Though. I'm like, whatever, <laughs> whatever year that... The black, the black people were black women. One black woman at the end? Was it one? There wasn't no black woman in the house? <laughs> Wait a minute, who was, who was the... Wasn't she Indian? The First doctor? All, that, <laughs> Dr. Pandam. By the way, they couldn't... You know, I, I, but I, I, I saw Amanda Seals complaining about, uh, you know, the lack of black women you don't say. in the movie. But, <laughs> but, Shocking. But I'm going to tell you why that was very accurate. All right. If there was a black woman in that house, mm-hmm. food would have lasted a lot longer. Okay, black women know how to cook things up. They know how to feed a family of five with just one loaf of bread. Food would have like if the black woman was in the house, they couldn't have had that storyline about the food not lasting. You know what I'm saying? They, so I, I get it. That's why there was no black women in the house. Right, 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 right. It says that Lil Ro tries to explain that has been around since the beginning of time, but no one. Nobody listened to him because he worked at the supermarket. I caught that part. <laughs> now I caught that. Po- now if he was a millionaire. They'd have listened. <laughs> you work at the fucking supermarket, right? Take Ralph. that name shut tag the, off. Shut the fuck up. Take that fucking Tell me you name own tag this off, shit. bro. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I you? am Michael. Yeah, I work it. I'm writing a novel. <laughs> I give out a fuck about your little... book about it, but despite all of his knowledge about racism, the only job he can't get is a grocery store. Is that the grocery store? But I thought he said it was about biblical and people being... Yeah, for... just biblical he demons is. and shit. He said... No, no, I, re- okay. I remember that part because he explained it. He said that it's people being forced to judge... Or you're being judged based on... Man, I don't remember. I just thought the shit was kind of whack. It had its moment. I, I just didn't like so, the end. This is a top six theories, though. It's all good. It's all good. I'm saying all that to say. Yeah. Everybody got caught up in the hype of social media. That's the only reason we watched Bird Box, because everybody had the fucking memes and shit. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. So when we was in Anguilla, everybody wanted to watch Bird Box. We watched fucking Bird Box. Great. I thought Bird Box was whack. And I was like, all right, put on coming to America. Because it's just like when you watch something whack, now I need to fucking go to. But as we're, as we're flipping, we see Black uh, Mirror Bander Bandersnatcher. Snatch? I didn't see the whole thing, yeah. Bruh, that shit was awesome. That shit was great. <sighs> I tried watching it. We, we were watching it in, uh, in, in the Bahamas. We put it on and... I ain't got time for all that choose bro, your own adventure Andrew, shit. Andrew, like, let me tell you something. Here, bro. That like, shit was great. And then and you the, got to run it back to the beginning if you no, get it you wrong. Don't. No, it just depends what choices you make. Right it's five different endings. Say what? It's five different endings. It's literally five different endings. Like we ran in two days, we got through all five, and then once we got through all five, we even Googled some more, and it was like one other ending that that was it was okay. It was cool. It, get, it actually leads you to a Bandit Snatcher video game, like the actual video game that's in the movie. There's something that happens at the end of one of the endings to where it's like this tone, and you can get the tone, and then you you log onto the website, play the tone, and you get the Bandit Snatcher video game. But that shit was so dope to me because did you see the part when the guys like. Nah. He's talking to his therapist and he's like, I, I feel like I'm not in control. <laughs> I feel like somebody's controlling me. Yo, that shit was ill. And then there's one part where you got to select whether or not to tell him. So he's like, what the fuck is going on? Because he's fighting shit. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is happening? And you got to tell him whether it's Netflix or Bandersnatcher. And he's like, what the fuck is a Netflix? Yo, that shit was... That was awesome. That was... A, you know why? Because I've always been... Pl- I've been playing with the idea of choose your own adventure books lately. Actually have something coming out that's choose your own adventure like so when, so when I saw that in the TV show I was like oh that's dope you know what I'm saying like like of course I felt like fuck somebody came with my idea but no no idea is original nothing news under the sun somebody of common sense would tell you at some There's point been choose your own adventure, choose your own adventure book I'm gonna take that and put that on some yeah. type of content especially with this screaming service shit yeah. but that Black Mirror Bandit Snatcher was so dope especially when the the, 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 the dude broke down how we're all in Pac-Man did you see that part? no Oh, Andrew, you got to watch this shit. You would love this shit, bro. All right, all right. I'll give it a no, second chance. No, you would chance. love it. I'll give it a second chance. I, first of all, I love the idea, and it's something that can only happen in streaming because you don't have a limited amount of time to tell the story. Network, bro, I don't see how networks can compete with that shit. No, no, they can't. Physically, they can't because they have an hour to tell the story or two hours to tell the story. Yeah. This Bandersnatcher, as I'm understanding from you guys, could potentially take five hours. This shit took us two days. Two, two days, right? Like We watched all the black bird box. Right. What's that shit called? Bird box. You watched yeah. all the bird box. Technically, it would be white bird box. <laughs> 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 we watched all the Bird Box yeah. and then we watched Band of Snatcher right after that and got caught up in that shit and then when we stopped the Netflix because you know you can finally exit the credits if you want when you exit the credits we only had got through like 30 minutes we were like yo what the fuck so the whole next night was fucking spent on finishing fucking Black Beer 
Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I love it. I, 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 I love the idea. I love the concept. And again, at the end of the day, you're just selling distraction, right? So if you can distract somebody for five hours, six hours, eight hours with the same one movie... It's, it's a, a new, brilliant it's a concept. Way, it's a new it's way to great. binge watch. It's Bro, great. And, I just and, didn't want to make all these decisions. Like I went into it with the wrong expectation. Life is about expectations. Mm -hmm. I went into it with, all right, this would be a nice couple of hours, just distraction. I had a great day. And then we had to make all these decisions about cereal. And I'm like, fam, I don't give a fuck what cereal Bro, that shit eat, is dog. so great because everything leads to something else. Like yo, when dude yeah, yeah. broke down the Pac-Man shit yeah, yeah. and how we're all in Pac-Man, yeah, yeah. he was like, Pac means program and control. He was like, we're all in this mother fucking maze and all we do is consume 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 right. try to run from our demons sometimes we get to eat our demons but then demons come right back he was like we go through one side and come out the other and we're still in this motherfucking system i'm like that's what the fuck they doing to us right now we can't exit this shit as we, we cannot we can. exit this shit we can but we don't want to exactly. i need more <laughs> you know, what the five different endings we gotta find all five exactly that shit oh uh, listen that I mean, shit like, was awesome what was really interesting about it is that you watched it in anguilla which was your version of exiting the system yes but even after exiting the system you still went want back to in the consume. system but that's but that's what happens like that's what and that's why these things are kind of dangerous to tell people. Like, not everybody's ready for this information. Like, sometimes you got a lot of people to tell them the truth. You know, like, if you tell people exactly what the world is and exactly how it works, their, they're like, emotions aren't ready for it. Like, yeah, when yeah, I started yeah. understanding how the world works and what we are, I even had to back away from it at times because I was like, whoa, whoa, am I ready to understand this? Like, am I emotionally secure mm. enough to understand that we're in Pac-Man? Mm-hmm. Right, like, is that I, I, I've put all this importance on our lives and what and what it is, but like, an earthquake happens and everything's over. So you know, you know what you're explaining right now? What's that? Another great movie that I watched over the holidays, which is Smallfoot. <laughs> that Smallfoot shit is, the movie. is that cartoon. It's shit. about Yetis. Yes. Okay, <laughs> not Sasquatch. Yetis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sasquatch's cousin. That shit was. Awesome Mom? too. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. exactly what you're describing yeah, right yeah. now. Because yeah. and fuck it, this is spoiler alert. We don't have time to be fucking waiting for y'all to catch up to watch movies. Mm -hmm. In Smallfoot, yeah. Yetis think humans don't exist. Of course, humans don't think Yetis, Yetis, Yetis exist. exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking a, a a human crash lands on the the fucking mountain or whatever the yeah, shit is. Yeah. The Yeti sees it. The humans like, oh my god, it's a fucking Yeti. Goes back, tries to tell people he saw a Yeti. Nobody believes him. Struggling struggling reality star who's, who's like a Steve Irwin who's trying to get his show fucking yeah, popping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Yeti goes back and tries to tell everybody a small foot exists. They tell him he's fucking crazy. He got to leave the fucking mountain. So he goes down. I'm going to find... It's four conspiracy theorists who everybody calls crazy who live on the outskirts of the Yeti right. fucking mountain. They tell him they believe him. He goes back to find him a motherfucking small foot and bring him back. He does that. He brings the motherfucking small foot back, right? The king of the Yetis has to explain to him, you stupid motherfucker. Yes, we know Smallfoots exist, but this is why we had to tell our people these Smallfoots don't exist. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you anymore because you need to watch it for your motherfucking Sometimes self. you got a lot of people telling the truth. And he says that. He says you have to, he says you have to, I'm, I'm lying to them for their survival. Yeah. He was like, he, he, like you got, you got to, I'm just go watch Smallfoot. Great fucking movie, man. That's why you show not tell, right? You, <laughs> if you want someone to believe, you don't tell them the Yetis exist. You get them in it. A Smallfoot, by the way, for anybody who's listening is a little confused, is what a Yeti would call a human. A human, because yeah, yeah, we yeah. call them Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. So they would call us Smallfoot. Yeah. yeah. But uh, what's huh? that? It's a kid movie, but all great, all, all, <laughs> all great kid movies have the messaging, bro. All great, and you know why they do? Because you know we that the kids, them. well, no, double. You know the kids gonna watch with the parents, mm -hmm. so they got double duty. They gotta have a message that the parents can fuck with. Like, remember Sesame Street was like low key, funny and like sexual. It had like weird like sexual innuendo. Like, well, it, Bert, I mean, they told us now, Bert and Ernie are gay. <laughs> Maybe that was it too. Yeah, yeah, but like, but like, not even sexual. But it was like uh, adult jokes kids didn't get. And you watching with like, or like, you know, you're watching with your babysitter. Or your babysitter's yeah. laughing. You're like, why are you laughing at this shit? What's going yeah. on? So I think those movies. I think that's why we can resonate with them. But back to that Pac Man shit. Like this, this goes to exact like about how they're telling us what to do and how they're telling us what to. No, no, uh, not Pac Man. Netflix shit. You know how like 
we are telling him what to do and yes. telling him what to care about and yes. telling him what to choose, right? Yes. Tell me that's not Twitter outrage. That exactly, that's exactly what right? the fuck it is. It's like, it's like Twitter gets upset at one thing, right? And then, like, this R. Kelly shit was a perfect situation. Twitter gets upset at one thing, and then all these people who know R. Kelly's been a pedophile for fucking ever all of a sudden decide that today is the day. Well, listen, I haven't seen it, so I can't speak on it, yeah. but let's pay some bills and we will. <laughs> we don't need no fucking facts here. <laughs> goddamn brilliant idiots. Mm. Now, today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Hems. 66% of men lose their hair by age 35. I am in that 66%. Uh, thankfully, baldness can be optional thanks to Hems.com. I'm not because of Hems, bro. Hey. A one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Uh, tell us more, Shokes. Well, the active ingredient is called finasteride. I've been taking that for years. I have a beautiful head of hair. And um, it really is just what it comes down to. I mean, as far as like aging and, and, and whenever you say a guy's aging great, it's just if he has hair, if he doesn't have hair. Uh, <laughs> and this only applies to uh, white people, pretty much, because black people age incredibly well. But uh, us white folks, we do not have that a privilege, so we got to keep our hair. Um, but if you want to keep your hair, you don't have to get one of those like lace fronts that dudes are getting now. Have you seen these like dude wigs? Never. Dude, no. Alex and I were just talking about it. They're doing like wigs where you can get a fucking shape. Of, it looks like you have like a Never. Caesar or some shit and it's just plastered I on your head. It. But you are familiar with what they are. Yes, I So you it. don't have to do that. You just get some finasteride or get this hymns and hop on it. Okay. They're well-known generic equivalents of the name brand prescriptions that I just said right there to help you keep your hair. Not snake oil, nothing. Okay. These are real pills. Go to forhims.com. You answer a few quick questions and a doctor review and prescribe you. Okay. The products are shipped directly to your door no more waiting rooms no more awkward doctor visits order now my listeners get a trial month of hymns for just five dollars right now while supplies last so see the website for full details go to f-o-r-h-i-m-s.com slash b-i okay for hymns.com slash b-i get your hair back all right let's talk about the pied pedophile Okay. Um, I, 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 I had no idea what the fuck was going on right. um because i was totally disconnected when i got back all I kept hearing about was R. Kelly, R. Kelly. Van was trying to fill me in, like, R. Kelly this, R. Kelly that. And I, 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 I couldn't follow the conversation because he was telling me about R. Kelly and he was telling me about, you know, other people that they were trying to come at for messing with underage girls. And I was like, well, I don't get what the issue is. And it was like, Chance the Rapper did this and did that. And I'm like, what? I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. What the fuck Drake. is going on? Drake. I'm like, what? I'm like, what does any of this have to do with R. Kelly? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So... I really didn't know what the fuck was going on. I, I I didn't even know the government was still shut down because when I got back, everybody was talking about R. Kelly. Everybody was talking about R. Kelly. Meanwhile, it's a whole government shutdown going on. Yo, the world keeps moving. That's what people don't realize. You could be upset about Oof. something. The yeah. world keeps going. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not gonna stop. Yeah. Listen, no matter what. I, yeah, I was um I was on the documentary. Um I saw people was, uh upset. Because they said I should not be on the documentary because mm -hmm. I, I got arrested for criminal sexual conduct with a minor back mm -hmm. in 2001. Mm -hmm. But the th thing that people forget about that situation is I also got my charges dropped. Right. Like, I cooperated with the police. I did everything I was supposed to do. I gave blood samples. I, I and, and I'm not going to... I'm not going... Mister. And that was the other thing, too. You know, when, when they came to me, they told me that no men wanted to do this special. Mm -hmm. Right? So being that no men wanted to do the special, I said, why, as a black man who's a father of three young girls, why would I not take the opportunity to speak out against somebody that I've been speaking out against? I'm supposed to not do that because of what you believe about me? Mm -hmm. That's not my truth. Mm -hmm. Which, your perception of me, what you believe about me, is not the reality of my situation. No, I'm going to speak out against... This sexual predator, the same way that I've always spoken out against this sexual predator. And then, yeah. you know, now I'm seeing it's like some narrative the way they're trying to bring up old tweets. I guess Mon Monique posted uh, my old tweets and, mm -hmm. you know, my, 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 my friend, Mr. C. Mr. C. Yo, y'all got to get over it. Yeah. I mean, y'all got to get over it. I know the donkey of the day is hurt, but. You did that to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like I, didn't, I didn't make any of this up about you. So I, I know for the rest of your life, you're going to be trying to get back at me. But what you need to do is just look in the mirror and say to yourself, you know what? I wasn't living my truth. 
I'm the one who got arrested for being out here sleeping with, you know, transgender women or transgender prostitutes, whatever it was. Yeah. Like, all Charlemagne the God did was give me donkey of the day for constantly getting arrested. I never insulted you for your sexuality. I said, be free, Mr. C, be free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All I wanted you to do was get a boyfriend in an apartment. Yeah, yeah. Be who you are. That's yeah. it. Nothing more, nothing less. So I understand that you're going to take shots whenever you get the chance to. Sure. But to answer your question, Sister C, because, you know, somebody screenshotted that and sent it to me when I got back. He asked, you know, how could somebody with sexual assault, be who got arrested for sexual assault, be on there talking about uh, R. Kelly committing sexual assault? Because that's what happened. I got arrested. That's not the reality of my situation. I've never sexually assaulted anyone or raped anyone. So it's right. just like, what I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to act guilty because you think I'm guilty right I don't understand like what the logic is yeah. but you know once, and, and also too my problem with it was it's yeah. not about me why are you right. talking about me right. we should be talking about the abuse of young black women that's what we're all doing by speaking out against R. Kelly right like that's right. what the the point of this documentary is about speaking yeah. out against R. Kelly like we should be focusing on that like none of us are focusing on the actual issue I'm hearing, like I said, I'm hearing about Drake. I'm hearing about Chance the Rapper. I'm hearing about, you know, Jay Z. And I'm like, what? What is going on, Diddy? I'm like, what is going on mm -hmm. right now? Why you you're fo you're focused on Charlemagne saying he shouldn't be on here talking about a man sexually assaulting other women because of your perception of Charlemagne, because of what you believe about Charlemagne. You know how you know how wild you got to be to try to discredit somebody for talking against a sexual predator. <laughs> you're trying to discredit me for talking against a sexual predator mm -hmm. same sexual predator who's threatened me on quite a few occasions yeah I don't think people realize that <laughs> last year when I was telling everybody to hashtag PP14 yeah on R. Kelly's Twitter page yeah. because of the the whole he had all that coat or whatever he was like yeah I would love to meet up with you, you come to a hotel let's have a conversation no Hell no. Yeah. Those same... Aren't I a little old for you? <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> Those same managers yeah. who, who these young ladies are saying were threatening them, they, yeah. they tried to do the same thing to me. Yeah. Like, so when, when R. Kelly's saying he's going to sue people, he's like, oh, I'm going to sue Lifetime. I'm going to sue... I, I saw this on Complex. I'm going to sue Lifetime. I'm going to sue John Legend. I'm going to sue Charlemagne the God. That's the problem with, once again, you guys on social media, you women on social media, y'all not on the front lines of nothing. Yeah. All y'all doing is talking, talking, talking. It's a bunch of empty calories. You know what I'm saying? When we talk, mm -hmm. when we have these opinions, there's real life consequences. They're expensive. That's the difference between me and you, baby. Yeah. That's why. So you wonder why sometimes people don't say nothing? Yeah. Because it's not worth it to them. Well, to that point, exactly. It's like these people are the reason why Oprah's not going to run for president. These people are the reason why it was you and John Legend were the only dudes on there on that special, right? These people are the reason – when I say these people, I mean like this fake outrage type of stuff, mm -hmm. right, where they're attacking you. It's like the cost of speaking out is too expensive for a lot of people to pay. You're willing to pay it, but a lot of other musicians are like, shit, I'm not going to have them looking through my old tweets. You know why I'm willing to pay? Because it's not about me. Right. You understand the greater value it's of not it. About and that's me. a different conversation. But – um about like how smart it was, but I guess you're willing to pay the cost. Like, you know, and I guess I, you know, I've said it on this podcast here, it's like, I'm willing to pay the cost to be a comedian these, these days. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. I will pay that fucking price because yeah. I believe in these jokes and I believe in this type of comedy. It's like, if you believe that people need to speak out against this pedophile and you're willing to pay the cost of motherfuckers digging up these old tweets and trying to create this fake narrative, that's cool. A lot of motherfuckers are not, you know what I mean? Like I didn't yeah. see, was Jay-Z in it? I didn't see Jay in it, right? Nah, he wasn't in, and Jay he, did a whole album with him. And like, to be honest, Jay could get a lot of smoke for that. Like, you did a whole they album giving him smoke, and they maybe rightfully should. Like, if you knew as much stuff as people in the industry knew, and you doing a whole, I mean, if you bottom line knew that he married Aaliyah at fifteen, that's yeah. that alone is like, I don't know if we need to do it. Like, you know what you're saying is true, but that's another reason. That's another reason I I didn't hesitate to do it because I feel like as a radio personality, even though I've always spoken out against R. Kelly, I feel like our industry has you know enabled a lot of R. Kelly's bullshit. And the reason I say our industry has enabled a lot of R. Kelly's bullshit is because whenever he was going through you know his 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 legal situations, all he did was kept he kept putting out music, kept putting out music, and radio was playing that shit. 
You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and and TV networks were playing his videos and all that other kind of stuff. That gave him more money. That gave him more power. That gave him more influence that mm-hmm. he was able to use to manipulate more young women. Yeah. So if you've been a part of a problem for so long, why wouldn't you try to be a part of the solution? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Because a lot of people don't want to pay the cost, dog. As simple as that. They're like, I don't want the smoke. Listen, I ain't know, y'all know me. Char- Charlamagne God has never claimed to be perfect. Hey, you know what I'm saying? It's hey. a lot. It's a lot of old shit that you can pull up on me yeah. to use against me if you choose to. You and, I, and that's fine. I'm willing to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I, I I truly believe when people can't do anything with, a, with with anything when people can't do nothing with who you are, yeah. they keep trying to dig up who you are. But the, but the, the paint the narrative that I somehow That's support R. R. Kelly is fucking stupid. No, no, I got no I got I, I got too much no, smoke for R. Kelly over the years. No, I don't think that people are saying you support him. I think they're just like, how can you say this with these allegations towards well, you? Well, well, one, one of my one of my one of my uh, um, consistent enemies. I don't want to say enemies because I don't, I don't critics. believe enemies. critics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Monique. Yes. She she posted some some old tweets. Can I say this about that? Yes. First of all. I hope you're going where I think you're going with this. I th- I think I might be. I think we maybe. I think we maybe need to give some smoke to people who hijack causes as an opportunity to shit on their enemies. Personal agendas. Yo, so, because think about how evil. <laughs> think about how. Think about how evil a person you need to be when little girls out here getting raped. And you look at that and you start salivating like, ooh, I could use this. I could use these little girls getting raped to fuck over Charlemagne. And they posted, they, they posted. Right? Yeah, like, tell yeah, me. Yeah, it's, and they, she posted three old tweets. Um, it was, uh, what was one of the tweets? That's evil, bro. I'm what? sorry. That's a different level of evil, well, I wasn't bro. even going to go there. I was, I was thinking more so like, you're, yeah, you're a comedian, right? Yeah. You're not going to sit here and tell me that R. Kelly and that R. Kelly tape Mm-hmm. didn't create so much comedic content. Now, I was talking, what's the young lady who called the radio station this morning, Taylor? Lisa? Yeah. Lisa is uh, one of R. Kelly's original victims. Um, she's, I think she, if I'm not mistaken, she was the first person to testify against him. I asked her. I said, yo, how did you feel, you know, back in the day when Dave Chappelle was doing pee on you, you know, I, th- I said, I said, I've made jokes at, at at R. Kelly. I thought they were at R. Kelly's expense. You know, if I say something like R. Kelly's looking at Barack's daughters like they can get it. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking I'm dissing R. Kelly. R. Kelly, you know, this, yeah, this, yeah. This, this 10 years ago when I, when I tweeted that. And I said, and I think I think another tweet was, um, you know, uh, R. Kelly looks 20 years old. Clearly, you know, the fountain of youth is an underage vagina. I'm thinking I'm I'm thinking I'm I, let's not laugh at that because I don't want nobody to take that the wrong way like, like let's not do that I laughed at it but I, I, I'm thinking I'm slandering R. Kelly right I didn't think about the actual victims so I asked her I said how did you feel when all of that was happening Dave Chappelle pee on you yeah. you know the boondocks episode jokes sure. like I made and she was like it was very frustrating because it, it, it made it seem like nobody was taking this situation serious well and, 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 and truth be told we weren't well no, I can't say what she feels. What you feel is what you feel. I'm yeah, not going to yeah, tell yeah, you yeah. how to feel. What I will say is this. The frustrating part is not the jokes. The frustrating part is the justice system not delivering for that girl, right? True. Because true, if the justice true. system stepped in and delivered for that girl- We could make all the jokes on our You could get want. those jokes yeah, off yeah, because- you're right. You're and, right. And look, I'll nerd you're out right. about comedy all day, but you're like right. the, the crux of that joke is not about the girl- the crux of the joke, at least what I hear from you in a joke like that or Chappelle, is that being a pedophile is wrong. It's disgusting. Yeah. That is what the joke is hinging on and leaning on. Yeah. So you're by saying the joke, you're saying R. Kelly's a pedophile. It's not about the victim. It's yeah. about R. Kelly being this the bad pedophile. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fat joke. I mean, that's what I thought. It is what it is. But these no, girls I mean, aren't getting justice. And if the fucking justice system delivered for these girls, you know what? We're just reinforcing what a piece of shit R. Kelly yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. If the just, you're absolutely right. If the justice system had delivered for these girls back then, piling on to him. Would be good. Making those jokes, absolutely. But I, I, I can see in... in 
you know, now, because I'm older, you know what I mean? I was 10, 11 oh, years ago. Of course ago. I, I empathize. I, I yeah. empathize with the girl. Exactly. I'm not saying that you we didn't. We didn't have empathy for the victims. Like, we, we, we weren't thinking about it. We were just right. like, fuck R. Kelly. Let's clown exactly. this motherfucker. Exactly, yes, yes, yeah, yes. And, yes. I, and, I, and the other tweet that they were mad at was, I, and I don't really understand the context, but I said, and furthermore, R. Kelly had the best celebrity sex tape of all time. <laughs> yeah. Now, stop laughing at this stuff. <laughs> stop now, tweeting it. You're right. <laughs> Motherfucker you're right. angry. <laughs> we laughing you're at right. your bars. But it was 11 years ago, 11, 10 years ago. Yeah. But what I was saying was, and probably best was not the right choice of words at yeah. all. But what celebrity sex tape has produced that much content? Think about it. We're 25, 30 years Kim later. Kim Kardashian. We've had, we've had Kim Kardashian's was no the best. way. Kim yeah. Kardashian and Ray J can't touch the R. Kelly sex tape. Not even a little bit. They, now, Ray J and Kim's sex tape produced the Kardashians. Exactly. But I'm talking about content. Dave Chappelle, peeing I mean, on is you. Car- is Kardashians and, not content? I mean, they have multiple TV but no, shows. No, I'm talking about like content based on the actual tape. Dave Chappelle, hold on. That Ray J, Kim Kardashian sex tape produced three children with Kanye. How? If she's never famous, she not meeting Kanye. Oh, stop. That's I'm just race. saying, bro. Off. I'm just saying. Nah. You never. If she's not Kim Kardashian, the yeah. famous celebrity socialite, yeah. she never going to be Kanye. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about the R. Kelly tape produced so much content. I mean, come on. We're talking about a bro, documentary. We're talking that about a Kim t- Kardashian sex tape freed Centoya Brown or whatever her name is. No, I yes. get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but you're yeah. not listening. Oh. That tape made Kim famous right r kelly's sex tape produced a bunch of content ah, directly that was directly produced. directly produced. reflected gotcha. from that tape got gotcha, you pee gotcha. on you when he says let it drip but when uh, dave Chappelle's like drip yeah. drip drip that's based off r kelly saying let it drip you yeah. understand like, god like, the word drip has changed over the years huh i guess, I guess. like the aaron Magruder boondocks yeah. episode like I'm, I'm talking to envy this morning envy was like yo i never saw that shit that shit was wow that yeah. was on tv yeah. and i'm like was it on tv I love the Boondock. Like, like, I, like, see, that's those are my shows. Yeah. So I used to study those. I get I you. I get what you're shows. saying. They directly, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They, cre- they directly created content. So that's what I meant when I said, you know, R. Kelly got the best celebrity sex tape ever. I'm not saying it like, oh, it's the, the best. quality of it was good. Nah, yeah. Come on, man. Like, come on, stop it, stop it. And then they bringing up the uh, old clip from Brilliant Idiots. Yeah. Well, I was like, I learned to eat ass from the R. Kelly tape. Yeah. I did say that. Yeah. It's not like the it's not like the it's not like the the, the woman's ass he was eating was underage. You understand what I'm saying? She like, wasn't. No, it was five different girls on the tape. Ah, uh, you know? and then and then I talked about we the the cum pee, cum. cum thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you call that. Do you call that physics? What is what's the word for that? Biology. Biology. Yeah. Still trying to figure that shit out. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah, all yeah. I'm saying. Like I'm like I'm like how is that possible? You know. So it's just like when I when I when I'm, when I'm talking, I'm not glorifying anything that he motherfucking did. I'm just right. watching this shit like everybody else and saying, my God, this yeah. motherfucker is insane yeah. on a, on a whole lot of different levels. Like it's a number of different reasons to say why R. Kelly is insane, why he's sick, and I will be the first person to tell you, yes. And I heard that they explored this in the documentary. I didn't see it. But yes, pop culture, that shit was a, a running joke. R. Kelly was a running joke yeah. for a long time, even though we all understood the seriousness of the situation. <laughs> but we yeah. thought clowning him yeah, yeah. was what we were supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know? But now, 2019, we're looking at it. We're like, yeah, that shit ain't so funny no more. Especially after after seeing that documentary and you like all of these different women and the things that he used to do to the, the women. It's like, this motherfucker is sick, not on a... This motherfucker's just sick. We should make jokes about it. This motherfucker's sick. He needs his motherfucking ass kicked and, and needs to be thrown under a jail somewhere. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why it took the documentary to make us realize this. I mean, we had all this information. I don't think people did. Well, I'm, I'm realizing yeah. now that a lot of people hadn't saw, hadn't watched the tape. Right. I'm realizing now that a lot of people didn't really understand Aaliyah was 15 years old. I always thought that was the sickest shit in the world. You marry a 15 year old girl and you write a song about her called age ain't nothing for age ain't nothing but and you fake the marriage certificate because you know it's wrong you fake i never knew like let's be honest with you and i grew even though i'm thinking now when was Leah born what year was she born for me and Leah had to be around the same age right 79 so i'm a year older than Leah. so damn Leah would only been 39 now isn't that crazy wow but but her birthday would have been coming up though like january now back then i just thought every celebrity was older than me unless they were like a child star, like you, you knew the child yeah. stars back then, but yeah. I just didn't think Aaliyah would was fifteen years old back then. I didn't think nothing of it, you know, 
until later on in life. Then when you see the marriage certificate, you're like, well, did he really forge it? Did that really happen? Were they ever really married? So it's just like, it's a lot of things that went into people not taking the R. Kelly situation as, as serious as they should have. But between the AJ nothing but a number thing and the, the Pied Piper thing is what really made me realize something is wrong with this motherfucker. Yeah, and I've, I've and I said that on the documentary, but I've said that a million times before on Breakfast Club, Brilliant Idiots. I remember TMZ caught me and Tiffany Haddish in the street like a year and a half ago, and and I don't even know why they was talking to us about R. Kelly then. Yeah, but I broke down the whole Pied Piper thing. Like that shit is just you're a different level of sick when you name yourself after somebody who led a bunch of kids out of a village through music to never be seen again, yeah. and now you're watching these parents actually looking for their motherfucking kids they haven't seen their kids in years. Yeah, come the fuck on, bro. Like, yeah. ain't that, we don't got we don't got no rap for R. Kelly. Like yeah. there's nothing to talk about, and and for everybody saying shit like you got to separate the art. From the artist. How can you separate the art from the artist when the art that this artist is making is a reflection of his crimes? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think with the art to the artist argument, it's like music is, you know, objectively good and, and bad, right? Like a good song is a good song and that's just hardwired into our brains. There's nothing we can do about it. I think I was talking about it on Flagrant too, but like the same, every rock song that's been popular over the last 30 years is the same three chords in it. Literally the same three chords I don't listen in to it. Rock, so I wouldn't know. That, that's fair, but like I literally the chord, um, down, 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 all of them. Chord? Well, the chord, a, a chord would be down. Oh, and then, there's another one yeah, and another yeah. one. There's actually a YouTube video. It's really funny. There's these comics that do it and they play every hit song with the exact same chords. Just because R. Kelly, R. Kelly's music doesn't gotten worse because you found out what a piece of shit he is, but it's going to elicit a reaction in you that makes you go, well, I don't want to keep listening to this music. I stopped music. listening to R. Kelly's sexual songs a long time ago. I stopped show. listening to songs in general. I've never bought an R. Kelly album. I don't like R. Kelly and... I just I've never supported it. Nah, I just we used think to fuck with Kels. I'm not gonna lie. You 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 had to, like the first of all. I think Twelve Play is the most overrated album of all time. Twelve Play literally has like six good songs on there. I remember Bump and Grind, and I remember watching that as like a fucking eleven year old at my house. Like this is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot, bro. Like okay, well yeah. now that you hear that song, yeah. think about that. Think the mo think about the fact that the motivation for that song was probably a fourteen or fifteen year old. I now How the fuck can you listen? Now to that you shit? can't. That's what I'm saying. Now you can't listen to music. Now that you understand what's yeah, going on. Even in the these woman situations. that called this morning, Lisa, she was like feeling on, uh, feeling on your booty Boo was about her. Yeah. Her booty. Yeah. Boo Oh yeah. yeah, she said she was like feeling on your booty. It was about her. Um, it was another song she named. I can't. I, I can't. I can't remember. But I don't know. All I know is this: oh, Kelly's a piece of shit. We've been saying he's a piece of shit. Welcome to the club. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like this is nothing new. Like, I've been getting the threats from R. Kelly and his team. I've, I I, mean, I I got a homeboy, and I don't even know if he still manages him now because I haven't talked to him in a while. This used to be my man. And he's still my man. Like, I got love for him. But once he started managing R. Kelly, I was like, bro, I remember hitting him like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, how can you morally stand by this? And I remember him hitting me saying, like, yo, I need you to lay up off R. Kelly now I'm managing him. I'm not laying up. I'm not getting up off R. Kelly because you manage him now. Get the, like, bro, you got daughters just like I got daughters. The fuck are you talking about? A few and, months and, ago, and, yeah. And, I, and we've I, had these, we've had, like, knockdown, drag out arguments about why he shouldn't be doing that. And he was the one trying to facilitate the, yo, I want you to come sit down with him, hear his story. I don't want to nah. hear his story unless he's planning on being honest. Yeah. That was always, man, I think I've said this on the podcast before. Have I ever told this story before? I've never, have I, have I? I don't think so. I don't so. know. But, yo, unless you're planning on being honest and telling us, hey, I used to get molested when I was young. I used to get abused, hurt people, hurt people. That's not justifying anything that you did, but at least people will have a reason because you really cannot start getting to any healing until you reveal the, 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 the hurt. Right. So whatever he went through, he is just recreating that pain for other people sure. throughout his motherfucking life. But he got to go. Yeah, it might, I don't care if you got molested and yeah, that made yeah, you someone you. who molested, but I'm he got to go. You just take him I'm out back, you. you shoot him in his head. I don't have no mercy for anything that happens. There's a lot Robert of people who've been molested that don't molest. It's a fact. You. That's a fact. So it's like, we can't use that as an excuse or justification. That kind of shit like yeah. that. You out of here. We take you out back. Yeah. Simple as that. Um, I will say me being molested at eight, me and my therapist talked about this. Uh, well, two things. Uh, my ther me and my therapist talked about this and me and Bishop T.D. Jakes talked about this. When you're molested at eight, you never quite feel worthy. Because when I got molested at eight, 
Um, and I used to always say the reason I made her stop is because I didn't like the smell of her Jerry. Yeah. Truth to the matter is I made her stop because I understood that what she was doing was wrong and when i made her stop she started talking down to me like she sure. was like oh you got a big ass nose and you ugly and this mm -hmm. and that whatever whatever when somebody putting that into your head at eight sure that kind of never leaves you even when you grow and you become you know who you supposed to be yeah, yeah. you still have that i don't necessarily feel worthy like that's why that's why compliments yeah. are so tough for me like if my, yeah. if somebody says to me like yo yeah. Charmaine, i like what you do i'm like whoa but I'm more comfortable with, fuck you, Charlamagne. You ain't shit. Yada, right. yada, yada, this and that. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So that was one conversation that my therapist told me that... Um, Do you feel comfortable doing this podcast with me? Because when you look at me, your nose feels regular sized. Very. <laughs> Watching you go through what you go through on, the, on, on a weekly basis with that snouts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Makes me feel better about myself. But no, my, 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 my therapist. You smelling shit. You're like, oh, Schultz, I already smelled this. Oh, he smelled this like three minutes ago. You don't, you don't smell the woman's jerk that used to molest me? <laughs> Wait for it. Ah. <laughs> that 1980s activator. The activator. <laughs> but my, my therapist was telling me being... Uh, being uh, no, no, you're saying T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes told yeah. me that. My therapist told me something, too, about being molested at eight, and that shit just slipped my mind so fucking fast. I don't remember. But the idea the idea is that these things affect you, especially young A's, and they, they like affect build you. your foundation. Yes. But here's... Here's a here's a weird time, but maybe like where we get to practice this positivity, right? That experience you had made you kind of feel not worthy. Mm -hmm. And that feeling of a lack of worthiness instilled a work ethic and insatiable desire to get value from the outside. And maybe you don't become as good at what you are or what you do without that feeling of a lack of worthiness. Yeah, but that shit is a fight, man. And, hey, it's, and you it's get a fight. tired, like fighting through that self doubt. It's a fight. Fighting through those insecurities, Without fighting through that worry. Like, 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 like Without that shit is a fight. Like, I don't want to fight all the motherfucking time with myself. So now it's your, now you know that you, now you know your programming. You got to figure out how to change that. And yeah. that's part of it, right? That's part of unpacking shit. But like, everything that we go through in our lives, like that hardship prepares you. Like that chaos you were going through with your, aunt or cousin or whatever cousin's the fuck ex-wife cousin's ex-wife like that chaos you were going prepares you for the chaos that you could be in now prepares you for all the chaos that you could do it's like yeah of course you feel comfortable in chaos right because you've been dealing with chaos since you were very young I don't know anything else like right? it's so much shit I mean you tell you so that's the next part of your life real talk figuring that out not only, after you figure this out it's how do you find comfort in the calm you got chaos down you're Bane bro <laughs> you Bane, bro. Like Charlotte Bane. Charlotte Bane. Charlotte Yo, Bane. Charlotte Bane. Yo, so it's like real talk. Like you feel comfortable in the hole because you were born there. Yeah. Right? So then like nobody talks about what Bane would have done like after if they just gave him Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, what would yeah. you be? All right, you gotta run it now. Everything's good. We're gonna let you do it. He'd be like, Well, I, I'm cool in the darkness. I don't know how to I remember Chico Bean told me one time, Chico Bean said, you like AWACS from Minister Society. You done did so much and caused so much chaos that you just like sitting back watching it happen to other people. <laughs> or watching other people do work, do dirt. I'm like, maybe. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I, like, like, like I said, like I don't want to just, I don't constantly want to fight this self-doubt. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't constantly want to go through that. Who does? Nobody does. That's why I'm 40 years old in motherfucking therapy. I'm unpacking all of this shit that I should have unpacked 20 years ago, 15 years ago. But that resource called therapy wasn't on my radar. You know what I'm saying? Like, just trying to figure life out wasn't on my radar. Like, one thing that therapy teaches you is empathy. Now, you asked me just now, you said, would I have succeeded in life if I didn't have, like, the chaos, right? Would I have gotten to this point with empathy? Maybe. Empathy don't cause you to say the things I would used to say. Empathy Maybe. don't cause you to talk to the people in interviews the way that I used to. And I realized that, I realized that two things made me realize that. Before therapy, what made me realize that was being on the other side. Mm -hmm. Meaning that when you become somebody with a little notoriety and you got a little celebrity and you start seeing things about yourself 
on blogs and in magazines and on YouTube that's not fucking true. You like, yo, what the fuck? So then you start thinking like, so why did I? Be- why do I believe everything I hear about this person? Or why do I believe everything I hear about that person? Mm-hmm. And then you start having conversations with these people, and you realize like this motherfucker is just a human being, just like me, going through the same exact shit. So between that and therapy, yo, that absolutely gave me more empathy. I'm talking to one of my homegirls the other day, one of my homegirls, and this might this one of my people, one of my one of my people I truly respect. If if she wants to tell the story, she could tell the story. But she was like. She was just telling me, like, I like your growth. You know, I like the way that you've evolved, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, I love seeing you do the work. And she said to me, you've made me cry twice in my life mm-hmm. and didn't even know it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just something I... Oh, oh, like in a bad way, cry. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. something that I've said, I said that triggered her in some way. And that's like, that's the thing that we don't take into consideration. Like, if I, if I, if I talk about being eight years old, I'm like... I made my, I made her stop because I didn't like the smell of her jerry curl. Everybody laughs, you know what I'm saying? And then I'll be like, yo, when I watch Great Out of Compton, I get triggered. Like, those are things that I say to make myself feel better about the situation. Sure. But it's somebody else out there who got molested when they was young as hell. And that, they don't want to hear me laughing yeah, and joking they and, gotta and being let, light about it. They got to let, I think that they should, in my opinion, I think they should take cues from you like the way i've always looked at the world is like i can find joy and laughter in the darkest shit i and that's, me too. and that's my gift because we can all find joy and joy that's easy to find yeah, joy and yeah, joy yeah, 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 but yeah. if i can find the joy and the funny in the darkest most uncomfortable things yeah. right now my life is double joy and if i got more joy in my life than you then try to do what I do. Bro, I, I, like, I, think about that, right? If at the end I'm of the day, you. we just try to be happy and we just try to be joyful. And I found some fucking way, my gift for whatever reason, the things that have happened in my life, you know, the universe, God, whatever it is, have bestowed this gift to me that the darkest of subjects, I'm able to pull fucking humor out of it. I can find joy in that shit that makes us uncomfortable. Like, yo, come on my side if you want more joy. Because right now, if you're miserable because of it, yeah. if that's how you feel... You got misery. So come up out of that. We're all we're all just laughing to try to fucking push all, the fucking door. We're, we're all just laughing to keep from crying. That's really what we're doing cuz I know I know I'm that type of person. Hey! I know I'm that type of person. Right. I'm the type of person who motherfucking when something is like real dark, yeah. And something is like real depressing and somebody's going through something, yeah. I need everybody to laugh immediately. So I'm going to say some shit, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, to get everybody to it's chuckle. It's a coping mechanism. That's how I cope with my shit. Sure. I understand, though, that everybody doesn't cope with their shit that way. Totally. So if they hear me talking about being molested at eight and they think that I'm trying to make light of it or joking of it, no, I'm not. That's just my coping mechanism. So all I'm simply saying is, man, I feel everybody's pain once more you, now. Here, here's this. Once you accept something that's happened in the world or something that's happened to yourself, once you accept it, what you do with that is up to you. Yeah, Nobody yeah, can tell yeah. you not to joke about it, right? Because that's how you're processing that shit. But they can be mad about it. They, they can, can think- do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. What I'm saying is, what's bringing you more joy? Is it bringing you more joy being mad at this situation? Yeah. Or is it bringing you more joy trying to find a joy in it? Now, some people can say, how the possibly could you find joy in all these horrible things? Give me a few minutes. You know what doesn't bring me joy? You know what doesn't <laughs> bring that? me joy? Trying to please every motherfucking body. Don't please anybody so but I yourself. Can only, I'm going to do my coping Yo. mechanisms because I'm the person that has to deal with this shit. Yo, you want to and, and I'm going to, and, and you know what else brings me joy? Having, like, like you know, constantly evolving, constantly growing, learning empathy for other people, but I'm doing that because I you want, it. want to do but it. But that's the thing, Charlamagne. People don't want to be pleased. They want to be led. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the biggest contradiction in the world is the assumption that people want to be pleased. They don't want that shit. They want to be let. You were telling me the other day, we were talking, I think it was last night, just about like even the idea of freedom. Like people think they want freedom. No, they want security. Yes. They will trade that freedom for security in a heartbeat. Y'all, they don't have no freedom now. All these motherfuckers think they got free will. Y'all have no free Not, will. Watch Banner Snatch. That's it. I'm You're serious. in Banner Snatch. I'm like, the second the timeline tells you to be upset about something, you upset about it. Are, you are, think it's you got are, free will? Or as soon as the timeline tells you to care about something, you, care you start about caring it. about it. Listen, man, this is a dark conversation, so we're going to lighten the mood we by bringing in mood. two reckless motherfuckers. Let's pay, <laughs> let, let's pay these bills for us, All right, and then we'll come back and talk to uh, L'Oreal and Wax. Yeah. Oh. 
Toyota isn't just a car company. And the new podcast, Toyota Untold, isn't just about cars. It's about mobility. It's about helping people move physically, socially, and emotionally. It's about respect for people and continuous improvement. In Toyota Untold, you hear the behind-the-scenes stories about how a son's love for his mother's for his mother led to Toyota's unlikely origin as an automated as an automated loom company. Why and how a Toyota Tundra was used to tow a space shuttle through the streets of L.A. and how robotics and other advances in technology and mobility services are being researched and developed to address challenges for the elderly, disabled, and even Olympic and Paralympic athletes. So much more is on this podcast, guys. From advanced technology to the Olympics, space shuttles to natural disasters, discover how Toyota is rethinking mobility in the brand new podcast, Toyota Untold. You can find Toyota Untold right now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Let's get so back to the show. Let me hug L'Oreal. Yeah. Boom. I'm going to give you an air hug, L'Oreal. Hi. L'Oreal in here smelling like the, the finest of fragrances. You know what I mean? So listen. Thank this you. is this is very interesting to me because L'Oreal and Wax have a new podcast mm-hmm. called Bully and the Beast. Yes. yes. Who's who first? That's of all. what I need to ask. I'm yeah. the bully and he's just whatever he is. Look at him. Yeah, he looks whatever. like a fucking beast. Listen, you see, she's been bullying me ever since we first met. You remember the time we first met? Oh, I can't. Listen, one of my favorite stories ever. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. We're in, well, first of all, this is Wax's fault. No, it's not. No, 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 no. Thank you. It's Finally. Absolutely Wax's it's fault. Not, bro. Finally. What happened? Let's, let's, let's keep in mind Wait, this what was happened? seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, it was, maybe it was like two, uh, 2011, yeah. 2012. So maybe? Was, yeah, seven. I'll give it seven years. Yeah, maybe uh, like it's about 2011, mm-hmm. 2012. We're in LA. Yeah. It's my birthday. <laughs> I'm drunk as hell. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been slandering Buster Rhymes. <laughs> I don't even remember about what at this yeah, point. Yeah. You, you put know. him in the freezer. Yeah. Put him in the cold. freezer. <laughs> <laughs> cold. That's nice to do a segment on Birthday Club called The Freezer. Put him in the freezer. Buster Rhymes approaches me at Melanie Fiona's party. Me and Melanie Fiona got the same born day. That's how I remember this. Right. She's a cancer, 629. He walks up to me. He goes, Yo, you, uh, he goes, you know who I am? I go, excuse me? He goes, you know who I am? I already know where this is going, so let's just get to it. I go, yeah, you're an artist that, you know, I used to think was hot, but I think your shit is whack now. Oh, yeah. my God. He's like, you better stop this tough guy shit. And then he starts talking to me about his baby mom being on Wendy. Yeah. A whole bunch of stuff I had nothing yeah, to do with yeah. it. I wasn't even on this show at the time, then whatever, whatever. He goes, you better stop this tough guy shit. I'm like, you better stop this tough guy shit. So then his security comes up, and wax, wax. Punks, his security, really? whatever, whatever. I didn't see that part. Yeah, I didn't see that part. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, but prior to all of that, yeah. I'm see, I sped over yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, you forgot this part. Whole, let's get the good <laughs> shit. Let's get why she's a maniac. That's why I don't go to industry parties, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> talking to Chris Bosch's manager. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Yes. Chris Bosch's awesome. manager is talking to me, and he's like, you know, you'd be so hard on Chris Bosch. I said, I'm not hard on Chris Bosch. I just think that Chris Bosch would be dope if he was the first openly gay NBA player. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yo, instead of jerseys, you could have the jersey dress. You could have like oh, a... No. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, yo, you could have the high heel Nike boot. Like, I'm like, yo, I'm just like, that would be dope. He went out here. And so she goes, nobody thinks he's gay. I go, why go L'Oreal? Come here. I don't know why L'Oreal. Okay. I don't know what Me all people, of course. Like, come here. Walking like, over there drunk. Wrong person. Drunk is all crazy. I'm like, hot headed from Jersey. Because you got to think this is the time when Chris Bosch used to have all the, the, the pictures that used to look like yeah. 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 that. So I'm like, I'm like, L'Oreal, when people think of Chris Bosch, in the culture, what do they think about? She was like, oh, he's gay. Straight right? up. Straight so up. the manager's like, oh, oh, my God. And so. No, she said, oh, oh, my God. She's like, ah, oh, bitch. Like, get out of here. Charlemagne. That never happened. Thank I'm you. I'm telling you what happened. I was right there. That Thank never happened. You. L'Oreal was standing right there. I she would have heard right him. There. She, she heard her. her off like, ah, oh, bitch. Yeah, get that the That never out of here. happened. So I'm just meeting L'Oreal. I met her earlier. She said she's from Jersey. I'm like, hold on. I know she ain't going to accept that. So I'm like, yo, L'Oreal, she's called you a bitch. You going to accept? You going to let that Now, mind you, I'm walking because I'm not thinking. That I hear her say anything, right? So he goes, L'Oreal, you did, you ain't hear her just call you a bitch? No, I'm still talking to the lady. So as I'm talking to the lady, this is all I hear. Who the fuck you calling a bitch? Who, why I got your bitch? I'm like, yo, what's up? Like, yo, everybody Where? cool out, whatever. What's I up? hit ass. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Why would you start that? Right, thank no, you. Oh, oh, it was me? It was you. Yeah. I didn't hear I'm not going to say she didn't she call didn't you hear the bitch. She didn't hear the bitch. She didn't say that. I, I, I thought she got punked. I'm, I was going to kill her. Like, man, you ain't from Jersey. He's the, the only person I heard her say this. So I don't know whether he was thinking this shit in I his hit. mind. 
Huh? You had head. Like, we didn't hear right it. Now, it didn't happen. Me. It Somebody didn't call happen. me a bitch. I'll like, look at the person. I'm like, nah, he yeah, didn't. But if she goes he, if she didn't hear the bitch, then it's, it's if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there, does it make any sounds? Then no. Why the hell she go crazy if she hear the sound? Because you, you told it. me. You're like, so, no, she called you a bitch. So skip all nah, that. So I then y'all get into the thing. So then the busted thing happens. So then we leave. We're in the car. This is where it gets foggy for me. Because I remember the conversation. I just don't know how Wax and L'Oreal started going at each other. What happened? So, from my remembrance okay. of the situation, he basically just came out and started laughing. Like, we're in the car and we're just like, <laughs> so he's laughing, right? I'm in the back with him. <laughs> laughing right. about what? He's in the back. It's me and Ange. Angela's and in, in the, the front. front. Angela Yee. And he's sitting in the back with Charlemagne. So, he just starts laughing. So I'm Can like, what the fuck is wrong that? with this nigga? I'm not done. Oh, so I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with Still this nigga? Like so it. he goes, <laughs> she didn't even really call you a bitch. <laughs> now this after, I'm talking about it made a scene. I remember that you too. You remember that? I remember, I remember that. Because I remember y'all arguing about him. He, the, he said what he said and you was like, What? <laughs> like, I just, you play with my motherfucking career. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get to know people out here, and you got me fucking you running up ass on nigga. people. You bust ass nigga. Like, you L'Oreal, I'll spit in ass. your fucking face. You'll be dead in the morning. All this dumb yeah, shit. You'll be dead in the morning. She <laughs> called. She got on the phone and called somebody. She was like, No, but I he gotta... called me a bitch too. In the meantime, yep. like I'm like going wild. in on him, now, and he's like, Bitch, I did it. I was like, Why I spit in your face? Like, don't call me no bitch. Now mind you, I've known. I didn't know L'Oreal that long, maybe like a year or so, knowing Wax my damn near whole life. I think you're so, the beast. No, but listen, <laughs> I knew. Yo, listen, maybe. Oh, I got oh, more. You said, maybe. Listen, she the bully. Um, listen, immediately, I'm like, I'm no, afraid. Immediately, I'm like, <laughs> Pull the car over, we getting out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause there's two things I really? know. Really? I remember yeah. it saying, get the fuck out of my did. car. She was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, let's get out. Cause I knew L'Oreal would spit on wax. <laughs> what? And I know wax had been going to anger management and all yeah, that I'm shit sure. back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Never yeah, seen him react like that with a woman, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, pull over, we'll just get the fuck out in the middle of LA somewhere. Literally. We'll figure this shit in out. Thank way. God. And there was no Uber. Yo, as soon as we got the party, I'm like, L'Oreal I love you, Charlamagne. I know it's your birthday, but you get the fuck out too. Take this and nigga. We was out. I was, I what? was so mad. She called yeah. somebody, right? She was yeah. like, I got this bitch ass. That's what I'm about to say. In the back of my motherfucking what car. To do? What should I do? <laughs> right? You don't know. My name but rings. Do you have, do you have, like, them a, LA do you have like a weapon or something? Or like, N- huh? Yeah, I got the whole L.A. behind me. What you oh, talking about? LA. I heard you called I thought you from Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ange called Envy and was oh, like, tell the okay, condom. Okay, I, I call, I I call problem like in them. You know why that you fucking, you know why you, he told me to sit there and say that? We was in the back seat. She's going crazy. She going to make a crazy U-turn, drive down all crazy. Like, oh, I was about to fight. You oh, that's what was. She was mad. She was going crazy. She was going 100 miles per hour. No, Charlamagne tapped me Now this like, is the made up part of nope. the story where I thought it gets you were mad about the girl though I thought we was leaving she and you was, was mad That girl thing had happened already The yeah, busted yeah, thing happened and that's why we, that's why we, we left L'Oreal was like you wasn't gonna do shit I don't fuck before you You bitch ass nigga You wasn't but, gonna do shit Charlamagne, Charlamagne, it's Charlamagne. No, uh, we, I love Charlamagne listen, I'm talking to this fucking clown <laughs> Listen it's Charlamagne for Charlamagne tapped me cause she was going crazy down the street so he like just tell her that she ain't call her a bitch Cause she did it she was going crazy. I didn't hear her say that. She was going crazy. I didn't hear her call L'Oreal a she bitch. She was driving say that crazy shit. down the street in LA. You see, you like, won't admit it. Fuck? She never called me a bitch. Yo, I heard You're it. from Jersey, but you, you live in LA. So, no, no, no. So, I'm from You're Brooklyn. You're so pretty. Thank you. What? You are so pretty. Thank you. Why are you angry? I'm not angry. You I don't like it, wax. Yeah. Oh, okay. I That's just never liked him. Yo, it's always yeah. been like this. They can yeah. stay stuck us together. They keep sticking us together. Like, after that, remember when we went fuck? to your birthday party and he ran out of gas on the highway in the fucking Maserati. Maserati? And he was like, something's wrong with the car. I'm like, no, you're a bum. There's no fucking gas in the car. <laughs> <laughs> this is like three days after <laughs> that the other job, shit. The, like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I-77. He's talking about something's wrong with the car. Yeah, ain't no fucking gas. <laughs> he was trying to push uh, it. Kelly can't read. <laughs> 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 Listen, he was about to be late to the fucking... I'm like, I have money. Racist driving by like, you can't give him nothing. Yo, I was (laughs) so mad. I'm like, I have money. Did you need gas money, you fucking... It wasn't even that. You know how long it is. 
You know, you know, you know, you know exactly how long it is from Columbia. Ain't got no gas on Charlotte. the radio. That's a lie. How, how <laughs> many exits? I seventy seven. How many exits? How many? A bunch. No way. You pass fucking Carowinds and all that no, no, shit. No, no, no. That's all the way down. <laughs> what if are you, you on seventy seven, bro? It's at least 20, 25 minutes or thirty minutes of just driving with no. From twenty six to seventy seven. Yes, to going to Charlotte Airport. He's full of shit. So, how much gas did you have when you left Columbia? Probably a quarter tank. I don't know. Boy, that's no, he he. Listen, First he of all, didn't have no gas. Yeah, that's it. It was I'm one saying. part of Wax's life. He would be on empty all the yeah. time. I can I tell. I ran out of gas with Wax. <laughs> <laughs> going on the way, going into the fucking tunnel right here. <laughs> what tunnel is this? The Holland Tunnel. We're trying to find a gas station again. Another place where there's no gas stations. Hold on, stop. The, the Holland gas stations Tunnel. In New York? Gas stations uh, right before the tunnel. Yeah, it's like where? seventy-five of them. There's literally eight because the gas is so cheaper in Jersey. Say what? what he was leaving the station. Oh, yeah, ain't nothing around. There's nothing yeah. around. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to throw that. <laughs> and he ran out of gas. And I'm like, here you go again. <laughs> here you go. Okay, so just out of curiosity, all right, so someone calls you the, the B word. They call you a bitch. Elite, Nobody right? calls me that. Allegedly. <laughs> Hypothetically, somebody does, right? Right. Why not? Um, why give them that real estate in your head? Like, why, why be triggered by it? Why give why them something that could get you going? Why not ass. just, like, go, I'm not going to give you that power Different to era. piss me off. Yeah, and I think that no, they I'm saying now. It. I'm saying now. I think they jagged it because I feel like once you see somebody that's caught off guard, because I just came back over and I was like, you call me a bitch? So like, you was clapping the, your hands. The way, you had to but you regardless, all I'm doing is asking a question. If she would have said, if she would have said yes, then I don't know where it would have went from there. But she didn't say yes. So. No, I'm saying now. Like, so now if someone did it, right now, like, why give them the power? Like, right now, if somebody wants to piss off L'Oreal, right? All she got, all they got to do is say the B word. Like, that's no, so much power really. somebody no, got. No, that was seven years ago. I'm a grown up now. All right, good. How old are you now? Like thirty? You're not supposed to ask oh, a woman. Why can't we ask like women how old she, they are? She was young. Yeah. As hell. I'm like, I'm in my early thirties. Early thirties. Yeah. 32. What is that? Thirty two. Yeah. That's fine. What you worry yeah, about? What you do look you great mean? for thirty two. Super. See, look yeah. what you just said. That made me feel like a grandma. You look great, great for eighty nine. Like, yeah, you look great. You look old great ass for bitch. <laughs> and I called you a bitch. <laughs> like, can, can you call a girl an old ass bitch? Is that or is that as hateful? If you gay, it's okay. Like, hey, yeah, you, you old ass bitch. You can say Yo, all gay that. guys can say whatever they want. If I ever call a girl a bitch and she pulls up. I'm gonna be like, yeah, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's a good, that was a good point. Come on, I'm you sexy. Yeah, you used to be with mad sexual harassment. Yeah, you used to call me all of that. Touch you... a girl's titties, yeah, like this like, titties, oh, no bitch. kill. Like, yeah, let me touch your titties, man. Now you gotta make sure he gay for real because if he ever fucked a woman before, I'm not playing with his ass. So because... if you got one vagina, Come one like, vagina, 50 you dicks, you not gay. Yeah, you no, like no, fucking no, bitches. No. If you fucked one, you like fucking bitch. You did it. You did it. So you looking at my pussy too, because my pussy might look like the other pussy you liked. So I'm not going. But how, even... What if you f you have to try something and know you don't like it? Like you ever try like Brussels sprouts? I've, a lot of my gay homies have told me that. They told me that they slept with women and they just didn't enjoy it. See, my problem is if you slept with one man, to me you're gonna be gay, gay right? Yes. So if you sleep with one woman, you're not all the way gay. I don't. I know a lot no, of gay, gay men that are virgins. Like they never had. Sex with a woman. Virgin, that's called that kind a, of that's called five star gay. <laughs> What does that mean? Okay. All That's the way. the way I would want my gay. A five star gay. Yo, 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 check <laughs> it. No, 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 no. There's gold star gay. This is actually funny. There's there's gold star gay, right? Gold star gay is you've never fucked any girls at all. You've just been with dudes. That's and what I would want. Wait for it. Platinum star gay. You were born C-section, so you didn't even touch pussy on the no, way out. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, no, boy. that doesn't That's count. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Don't stop me, bro. You, you can't, I ain't never touch pussy. You can't change that. Got nothing to do with pussy. <laughs> Your mama knew you was about to be gay. She like, no, so he doesn't on, like pussy, on, not on, that on, way. So, so, so you never thought about that. So all the gay guys, if you came out the C section, that you'd probably be gay. Come on, son. Oh, my God, no. You were doing so well. I'm no. asking. He's so never well. doing well. <laughs> I said, but you know what, though? You know what, though? This puts a lot... Uh, the fact that y'all know he always runs out of gas because he can't read and he doesn't know what he is should put a lot of things in context for y'all. All right? You <laughs> so can't even be mad at that. he can't follow a conversation. Exactly. Either. It wasn't like that. We it's, couldn't find a gas station. 
<laughs> Mind you, it was at the exit. Like it was, it was like he pushed too. it to the exit with a guy with a and truck. She didn't even get out the car. Hell, oh, no, she put I her didn't. shades the on. Fuck? Drove the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I took my my lemonade <laughs> out. Nobody's gonna see me. <laughs> I'm incognito. He was like, "Can you at least stare it?" I'm like, "Nigga, you got two arms. One could push and she one could pushed, drive." She made me do that shit. I man. made him do both. And y'all missed your flight. Yeah, yeah. thanks Stuck to him. Again. Stuck with his ass. Stuck Fuck. together. Really? No, no okay. I left. You know what's I went interesting to the bar. with you two is um, you guys have like friend chemistry. There's like no sexual chemistry between you guys. Yeah, no. Yeah. He, I'm not going to lie. But he he tries to have, have sex with everybody. Yeah. Everybody. But with you guys, yeah. I truly feel like you guys have like a friend thing going yeah, on. Yeah, he makes me want to vomit. There's yeah. no way. I like, can't pe- see her naked. People say, It's a what? beautiful woman she right made here. Me, yo, listen, she made me, <laughs> she, listen, she made me think of her eating ass the other day. And I would just Why laughing. would I make him think of that? We because was having we, a conversation. We, we was doing a show. You wait, know, you, I can wait, finish you, saying it. You were eating ass or someone was eating your ass? We was, what no, was we, we talking about? No, we were talking about on the show. And I was like, and I was like, damn, you eat ass. She's like, yeah, I eat ass. You I eat have a, before, yeah. yes. And Do I'm you like, like I, it? I can't I mean, picture Loria ass naked eating somebody's ass. Well, let me But why are you picturing all that? Like, when he talks about having sex, I don't think about his dick and like, like, uh, but, like I don't think I, about I, that. All right, but uh, like, is L'Oreal violating somebody like that on purpose? First of all, there's yeah. that is not exactly. a violation. <laughs> oh my god, finger <laughs> is the favorite thing. Intimate act between two <laughs> loving adults. Uh, the uh, so so back to the eating ass. Yeah. Like this this you, this is something that you like to do. This is something that's like if it's a special guy, what's Moral your violation? Thing? So it has to be a special guy because like you can't trust how people clean their ass. Like you have yeah. to get your finger up in there to clean a little bit. And if you Are don't you know doing that, the cleaning. Huh? That's how you're going to really know if it's clean or not. You got to be doing the cleaning. I'll clean. I don't care because if I'm going to do it, whatever. But my whole thing is like, yeah, I do like to put finger in, in like so a guy. Like you, respect told, him. you told me that before because you was violating somebody. You was like, yeah. yeah. Let's not call it but violating. You but this you don't respect don't, this, this is love. Love. She felt like it's a this form is beautiful. <laughs> I mean, this it is... depends. It depends on the guy. Like sometimes I like to do it because the guy has talked shit like, oh, I would never let nobody boom, do that to me. And I'm like, shut your ass up. Oh, no, no, no. A little bit too far. You give that ET phone home. That little brown. Little, that little I mean, brown if they finger? if they want what the tongue, eating? they'll take the finger. Eating the ass. That's not true because I've taken the tongue without the finger, but it's got it in close. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all really, like, like, it's so good, man. You're like, maybe. That's what I'm saying, because y'all have a G spot up there. So yo, y'all that's like a lie, yo. No, I feel like gay dudes made that up so they could butt fuck No, it's really true. <laughs> that's a myth, yo. Gay dudes are like, uh, the G spot's all the way up your butt. Oh, you're no. Way up there. There's right, only, there's only right one right thing there, I can though. put up there that's long enough did, to reach it. Did they make that up or did American Pie make that up? It's American Pie. I don't know. What about that with American Pie? Yeah, but gay dudes probably telling that to dudes for years. You know what that's called? It's called milking. Like what? What, what happened with Stifler? He got milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She milked milk. him. So like, it, you could come from like your dick by getting like fingered in your ass. But you not true. Just, that's the gay shit gotta, I ever heard. You gotta about jerk life. off at the same <laughs> time too. Like, not true. Well, first of all, that's very painful. Uh, to, to have a finger in your ass and be trying to jerk off at the same time. No, you gotta. They're not doing it right if it's know. painful. Hey, I'm not getting fingered. Remember in my one ass. thing about Charlotte. Me neither. I <laughs> speak from experience often. Uh, when it came, when it, they're so not doing it right. I don't know if it was American Pie or the. Or what it was. But you gotta relax your muscles. I tried. That don't work. <laughs> ain't no way. You, my dick is not hard when a finger's up my ass. Really? No. Yo. <laughs> when, when you're eating a guy's ass, right? Okay. Do you like his? Do you like him to be on his back, legs up like a turkey? Or do you like it to be he's in doggy style position? Doggy style is weird to me. <laughs> like anytime a guy gets I, I don't do the doggy style. If he gets in doggy style, that's gonna make me think something. He gets automatically. Yeah. Yeah. Like he gets um Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, it's hold, a little hold on. it's it has to be on the back. You gotta scoot scoot the gooch like that's all. Scoot yeah. up. like a turkey. You know like right? a turkey. Yeah, yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, you gotta like right, but do you respect the guy that you put his finger in his ass? Yeah. Why would you speak? That's, no, that's disrespecting him, and he should feel. Now, if I could put two fingers in his ass, I won't respect him. <laughs> <laughs> that's something totally different. I'm not about to be fisting my nigga. This dude is that's loose. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, dude, this is loose yours. Booty. Yeah, loose booty. This you is sitting yours. there fisting that, yo, him? If, nah, if, if, I'm if, cool if you put your that. finger in a man's ass, that's like putting One bad finger. gas in the car. One that's finger. like putting a regular gas in the car. One so, well, finger. You know nothing about putting gas in the car. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? A bad example, okay? What are you talking about? 
I'm just saying, that's you're like, why you're he doesn't fill up. up the car because it's gay. <laughs> <laughs> this guy whack is committed to his home. <laughs> He's like, Maserati sound like a dude. I ain't, just, I ain't inserting nothing in the like, tube, bro. In the putting two Get fingers in your ass is like no. putting the wrong gas in your car. Yeah. Yeah. I'm never putting gas in my car, but that's like putting two fingers in your ass. Like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? The gas hole look like a butthole, so I'm not putting that shit in there. Put my pump in the gas in the booty hole. I feel like that's just respectful like I also hear that girls like they swallow the dude come and then they spit it back in his mouth you don't respect this man if you'll do some shit like that I heard of that on succession I never did anything like that before but like I think that's now that I wouldn't respect that's the guy dis- I'm sorry yeah that's, dis- that's disrespectful nah cause then I'm looking at you like, right? yeah snowballing is yeah. what it's called disrespectful and, and that putting the finger in his ass is disrespectful after tasting your own cum would you do that Andrew you I didn't taste cum? my own cum oh, it <laughs> got did? close it got close. No, I came on my face by accident, and, <laughs> and it and it got caught in my mustache, and that's why I didn't taste it. But, but I consider was you tasting wilding, it. You was going yeah. crazy. I feel like I you just it. had to go like. <laughs> I thought about it. See. I thought about it. I tasted my own pee when I was a kid, thinking it was cum because oh I just wanted God, to know if worse. I came. But it was. Uh, yeah, you know how it is competitive what it is. I am. What's that? <laughs> so I'm in Anguilla, and you know, me and my wife are getting it in, and she's yeah. on top of me, and you know. I, <laughs> I she got the best of me. Yeah, and, and, it happens. It happens. And like, I, like I squirted, and it got up to like right here. Yeah, like, can I be Schultz? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, shit, my shit don't got that reach. I was like, my cum ain't got no My cum ain't got no vertical. I'm Steph Curry with the shot. (laughs) All right, don't play with me. It it all depends on how long Pull up from the half court line, dog. It's all good. If If I ain't fucking like a week or like a, like four or five days, then I'm gonna shoot you. But if I was fucking like each day, I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, That's... layups all day. <laughs> it's layups. <laughs> <laughs> finger out. roll. Oh, I'm going to finger roll. But I hit you some three-pointers when it's time. Give me like a week I ain't smashed. Yeah, I need to be backed up, bro. Nah, yeah, when the, yeah. But when the sperm does it, that's the vertical. Like, that's ups. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Your sperm ain't got no ups, B. No, nah, yeah, my sh- it, mine wasn't like a hierarchy shot. It was a chest pass. It was it was direct, like... Oh, the bounce pass. Just came right out. <laughs> oh! <that's like. laughs> No, he was yeah, upside yeah, yeah, down. Oh, you didn't tell so you, was that. you were jerking upside no, down. No, I wasn't upside down. I was so laying on my back. So it bounced off the backboard. Son. So you okay. came up. close to the room. He so came I, on his own face. Literally, it was like skipping rocks on a pond. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, you ain't tell us that part. Okay. The shit spread so you know what that is? Like that, that. Yo, that means you, ain't, you can't have no kids. See, all these times that you was thinking that you can nut is like, see, my shit is like motherfucking oatmeal. Your shit is like water. Yeah. You have what's called an STD. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get checked immediately for that if your no, cum is listen. coming out like fucking your shit yeah, like water. Disgusting. If your shit is skeeting like fucking water, you got your shit is like you ain't nothing holding together. Yeah, maybe. Does that means so a lot more was on your chest and in your face. Which one? What color is your uh, cum wax? Is there any green discharge? That definitely must yeah. be. Green. I could just have a more I powerful dick than crazy you. Crazy like this stuff like this. Listen, if wax. I had a green discharge. I, I could not have, be here with John today. I just feel like he has a yeast infection because he always talks like about it. how yeah. he eats yeast infection. That was when I was like young as hell. What? Well, he but you molested. said you did it for years. He got molested. How old were you? He never got treated. How old were you? <laughs> How you get treated? How old were you when those girls were What did I just like say? Four to nine. What did I just say? From four years old to nine years old, older women was making him eat their yeast infection. That's that is disgusting, fucking man. Yeah. Gross. That's disgusting. But how y'all, y'all feel about that? But you, you still do it, it now, so you no, don't. No, I don't. I haven't eaten yeast, yeast infection. I told you at 27, I I was around the area, and I was like, yo, that shit smells. She went to the doctor. She's like, oh, they had to have the yeast infection. I was like, that's the fucking smell I used to smell. Like a, a visual came back to me when I was young. Right. Girl, he's such a liar. Do you believe he that to, he didn't he, fuck that he, girl? He, so? he definitely smashed it. He used to always <laughs> lie about not eating pussy until one of our my homegirls had a picture. Had a picture no. of him. They no. had camera phones back then. New York Yankees hat on, no. down there munching. No. You know what? Right. Is that the girl that called into the show? Chill out. We actually what had a name? girl. What was Chill out. Who was her name? Mary? Oh, what's her real name? Tell me no. her name. Her name? Wasn't it Mary? Yeah, come here. Nope. What was it? Yeah, She's they, in my DM. got the same syllables as Mary. What yeah, it? so then that's uh, it. What was her name? That's it then. I don't, you can't. Just say it, name. I just want to say it, say it, Sarah? Say it. Oh, my gosh. I can't remember hey. what Oh, yeah. That was her? Nah, I don't know oh, nothing. That, oh, that, that bitch called. Her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch called. I don't know. What did she say when she called? Oh, my gosh. She said that Wax has a little dick. It's cool. That he likes to eat pussy. Yep. Um, what else was it, yeah. Taylor? She oh. said she said she was, it was crooked. He ate ass. Yep. Uh, he sleeps with his Tim's on. Yep. 
her out. You can't have a little dick. <laughs> Listen, you can't have a little dick if you're sleeping with your Tims on. <laughs> Tims make your dick look mad small. Can you yeah. imagine, like, oh, that's probably what it is. Imagine being, being naked with some Tims on. Nah, she didn't say he had a little dick, but she did say that he keeps his Tims and hat on. How big is little? How big is little to me? Yeah. See, I don't like big, big, big. You have, because a, small, you have a small uterus? Is it little for wax or little? Because, like, wax is a big dude. Yeah. So he could have, like, a six inch dick. For you, like, what size? I don't know. Why are we doing this? For so you. I like an average size. <laughs> I think average is probably like eight, seven, eight inches. Eight inches is the average size dick. Yeah, I think that's, that's the average, average size. Average dick. I I'd like someone okay. to Google average size dick, please. Can you look that up, Taylor? Just that's so we me, can baby. get to the bottom. So seven and three fourth, eight when it's warm eight out. Eight inches is average. What is... Just do just Google. Average. Yeah, just dick. Just Google average size penis. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. put dick. Yeah, it, got, it gotta be different. <laughs> Hopefully it's different. Okay. It says 9 to 16 Okay, we're in America. Yeah, so, well, I don't yeah, know math, math right now. Yeah, we don't know the fuck we talking about dick. I got so disappointed in two seconds. I was like, nah. Nah, I'm about to say it. Everybody got quiet. Yo, I said so, 9 to 16 feet. I'm not like, going to lie. Fuck? Everybody if got quiet. you describe your dick in centimeters, you feel good about yourself, bro. You feel very good. Yo. Nine Come feet on, bigger than a centimeter than an inch. Three? Hold on. Nah, it's a little more. Three feet? The average length of a flaccid penis no, is not. three point sure. can, so, can we fire her? No. Can you look? Nobody yeah. want no soft dick. Get a <laughs> soft dick. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You figure it out, then you tell us. Figure it out, then tell us. Jesus I Christ, know son. I thought like Dwayne was about to call me and lay it down. Hold on. Hold on. I got the roller right here. Dwayne walked over here like, shit, I got the answer to this question. I've Googled that several times. So, okay, let's say... Let's say three inches, nine, nine no, feet, centimeters, sweetheart. Give me your phone. Taylor, this is not Let it. Let me show you how to do this. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck is she asking for? Is okay. It's saying. Yo, yo, Alex, you're not supposed so, to be had did that. Four point seven <laughs> to six point three inches is the average. Four point seven to six point three. So I was close. you I'm think, killing the game. Hold on. So your <laughs> your your dick size yeah. is your My your dick. average you got a dick. is roughly thirty five percent bigger. Than the average dick. <laughs> okay. Right. So you tend to like a bigger dick. I guess. No, I don't though. Or maybe you don't know what inches exactly inches are. Maybe it's. I like, know what inches are. I'm not wacky. You know what inches are, but not like oh, when you look at a dick, you can't calculate the maybe, exact amount okay, of inches. This bottle is this bottle the average size dick or is this big? I would think that would be like about average or a what little bigger. What the fuck? I was gonna say bigger. <laughs> I'm not talking about Jesus this. Christ. Wait, 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 wait. Are we talking about the? Yeah, 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 yeah. My God. Wait L'Oreal. a second. Are we talking about the girth or the length? Are we talking about the girth? Oh, I wasn't talking about. This is a floating device. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> Fuck. Well, I know somebody no, like this. Right. This is about the right length. Bro, that's about like, a foot. I was saying length. <laughs> that's not a foot. Not a foot. That's not a foot. Hold on, I gotta look at it another way. Let me see. Wait. I wasn't <laughs> thinking about girls. That's, that's about me. <laughs> what about this, Sharla? Let me see. <laughs> nah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this me. This me. That one? This me. Yo, Charlotte, man, funny. He said, he said, this is the leg. That's about a foot. And then we were all like, nah, that's normal. He's like, nah, you right. That's about me. That's about me. I'm about that same time. What you think about? What you really talking about? I just look at it from a different angle. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you. No, but the girth is way too big. Yeah, this is more girthy. So look, I I do, I did date a guy with like girth like this and he was a little longer and I just couldn't do it. It was too hard. I couldn't do it. I had to stop and it was the sex was great but like it was too Hard. much That's yeah. like be the ultimate ego boost has it just <laughs> had to get yeah. now look I, your dick is too big I can't talk I can't to you no you. more yeah I would has, love, oh you man I love your, you can you imagine a girl going around telling her homegirls like I had to break up with him his dick's too but I told big. I told all my homegirls yeah, cause y'all them. could go have him yeah, because have I'm him. never fucking yeah. him again they gonna fuck he, him too I'm not gonna lie he called me not too long ago and I thought about it and I was like nah 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 I need my pussy did it affect your pussy did it make it did it change it did it like I feel the, like it would change it for the rest of its life because that shit is just it. like a yeah. rocket. Really? It and what about, head? what about <laughs> head? Could you even give head to it? Uh, yeah, so uh, like if I was really I drunk, I, could even put I my could mouth do it good. That bottle. Oh. If I was drunk, I could. But then if I wasn't, it's like my mouth wouldn't even get to that. And I'm just like, nah, I'm sorry. I can't do it. Just wow. Let's just have sex. 
A round of applause for this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> round of applause for this individual, this fucking half yeah, man, half he, Sasquatch. I'm not going right. to lie. Like, that shit, don't ever call me either. Again. So when is the Beauty and the Beast podcast starting? I heard Chris was bullshitting. It's with Bully. For a long time. Yo, bully and the Beast. <laughs> yeah, Chris was bullshitting. Yeah. Where's he at? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Why was Chris bullshitting? Y'all know? Christopher. I don't know. He was scared of wax. No, I'm joking. It's probably, it's probably, it's probably what it is. He's probably scared know. of both of y'all. Yeah, yeah you think so? It's possible. I don't know. It's think... definitely a reckless podcast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We we show that we don't like each other on it. Y'all actually know. love each other. Yeah, I love wax. He's yeah, lying. Like, yeah, I just I'm don't sure ever want anybody to think I would ever touch him with somebody else's pussy. Has yeah. he ever tried to hook see, up with you? Hell no. He knows really? he doesn't have a shot in hell. I but not, not saying shot in hell. Has he ever even tried? No. Not that. I'm dead serious. Do you not find her beautiful? I think you're stunning. I, I thank you. I don't even look at him yeah. like this kind of way. So no, but wax. Is. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm not looking. Here goes Chris. Right. <laughs> <laughs> asking, Chris, why were you uh, holding up the podcast, Beauty and the I mean, Bully, Bully and the and Beast? The beast. Uh, I didn't think it was ready yet. Um, and it's also a show that's like a little bit more heavy editing than a lot of the stuff we do. So I wanted to make sure they're like four or five in the can before we launch. Smart. Okay, so y'all got four go. or five in the can now. Yeah. yeah All right. So, so okay, you ready to go. And because then we're going to put wax in the can. The crux of the show is you guys are taking callers and giving advice yeah. on relationships. This is great. Stuff. <laughs> All you women out here that can finally put wax on blast, uh, y'all have a platform. Amazing. But, 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 but the thing is, the real thing is, I, I got two crazy people that's behind it. And um, it's funny. Fun size and, and L'Oreal. And I got, and L'Oreal. I, listen, I already got and I already got girls calling in, saying a bunch of crazy stuff like they slept with me and all those other crazy. Watch well, you slept all, with a lot of women. I understand exactly. that, but Jesus that's what you get for Christ, being a fucking why, why y'all gotta call them up and tell them to call in? We do not. He swears that we set him up. Like I don't know these hoes. They just call. Sorry, women. I don't know these females. They right. call and they b- put them on blast. Like, it is what it is. But sometimes he gets women that call and they want to talk to him. So that's dope too, right, Wax? Wax? How, yeah, how, did, cool. how do these girls even getting the number, Wax? No, no, no. We put it on Instagram yeah, and stuff it. like that. We I know. It. No <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's why they're calling. (laughs) (laughs) Why did call you? I gave him my phone. No, No, but they told the story. I think these girls, women be crazy. I don't know these girls. When you give them a number to call, they be calling that shit. (laughs) Yo, these ladies out here. I don't know these girls that be calling up there though. I don't know if I have sex with these girls or not. How many girls do you think you've had sex with in your life? Uh, I I mean, any man over thirty shouldn't know, but um. No. Why? You should know. Nah, I knock it off. If you don't Stop. know, you've done too much. That's a good point. I yeah, I know y'all, how many girls y'all had no, sex with. No, because I've done too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't put me out there be the only motherfucking scumbag. Y'all had sex with like five, like, yes, I Yes, yes, there's more than one scumbag in this room. Yeah, but no we want to know. Scumbag. Yeah, that's yeah, right. You, yeah, you got out the game, so you won. Your boy's still in it. You know, you, listen, you know what's crazy? You know what hurt my feelings today? I ain't gonna lie. What? We had like a lady that came up here and like she tell you, she said, I got great energy. Like you, you're, you're structured for like love and stuff like that. But she said, you're not gonna be with nobody. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, why? Like out of everybody, she told everybody else that they was good. But when it came to me that I'm not gonna end up with nobody. She's, why are you she's, surprised? She's a Native American tarot card reader. <clears throat> but she was amazing. She she read me too. I thought she was great. Yeah. But you didn't need her to tell you that because I've been telling you that for years. Right. Yeah, but I'm, at least I know I'm structured for it. She, she like, said, you she, know, she told you that you need to change your ways. But ho, that's what she ho, told you. Because you a dirty dog. She's saying I need to be vulnerable. Knowing the, somebody vulnerable, cheating on you. Bull, vulnerable. Vulnerable. I don't even Same think either one of you said that shit right <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. She's talking about a new sport. Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Listen, she wanted me to get V. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what is V? Yeah. Vagina. Vulnerable. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm like, saying? What? So that's basically having a girl, you know your girl cheating on you, just turn your head. Like turn the cheek. No, like, that's not what being vulnerable is. That's not what then that what means at all. Being vulnerable means just being open, open. to love. Mm-hmm. That's Share, all. Having empathy. I want love. Caring about somebody else other than Putting yourself. Putting yourself in compromising situations. That's what I'm not going to do because if I, I do get hurt, and then what? Well, Have you, you seen Bird Box, just, bro? About it. There you go. Yeah. Go there watch Bird go. Box, bro. There, there you go. It. You are living like Sandra Bullock in Bird Box. Yes, yeah, I am. With you the are really scared. On. And you need to be living like Sandra Bullock's son. You are blindside. blindfolded <laughs> okay. to emotional connection. You're blindfolded yes. to love. You, you won't let it in because, because I, you fear if you look at it, it will kill you. Yes, and it, it will. you're afraid. So what? No, but you know is that what? 
Why are you afraid of love? Because a lot of the girls that I know that I thought that was in love with these guys is having sex with other men. Why don't you tell the truth? Because you have a son, so, so you've been in love before with someone. No, I don't. Tell him, like, I don't got to be in love to have sex with somebody <laughs> wrong. <Yo. laughs> <laughs> what I got to do with anything? So you was never in love before, wow. Well. Listen, the thing uh, at the time, it's, it's, it's at, the time about, at the time, his girl that. was, at the time, his baby mom was pregnant with his son. He had two other girls pregnant in Miami. So it's, he thought. But that means he was in Miami using no condoms. So he wasn't in love. It's too hot for condoms in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> what he used to tell me. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> now that he's he burning, how hot is that? He's breathable, yo. He did a fan on that. He did a condom. I'll be good. Nasty. Nah, man. Hey, I was, I was yo, at saying. the end of the day, what you gonna do, man? Find a boyfriend. Listen, chill out. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. You gonna find yourself a real beast? <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I, I, I don't know, man. She she already told me that I'm, I'm not gonna end up with nobody, so why try now? So what the fuck am I gonna do? Because do at the end of the day, lady? what you like, want? You wanna be 80 her? years yes, old with nobody? He's sad. But that's what I'm saying. She already telling me my future. That's not that what she be told with him, nobody. That's not what she told him. She told him if he changes oh his ways. But, but what I you're essentially wax. saying is you're not willing to change. But I'm me. So how the hell are I change? You really gonna believe some fucking cards, bro? <laughs> See, he just not said he believe. I mean, I don't believe it. You, you just believe, believe, believe the no, shit you want to believe. That. Wax should believe that. Wax need to believe. Yeah, I'm, look, you need to believe that advice, but we could have given you that advice. <laughs> I've been giving it to him. I know. Forever. You don't need to be but a Native American terror reader. Girls? Everything. Like, These girls don't even know your name. You don't know their names. Who cares? Uh, That's the as long as part. I've known him, he's giving girls different names. You don't take your Tims off. No, you don't take your yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> Yeah. And you run from love. He's in love right now. He's been in love with the, one, the same girl for about two years now, but won't admit it to himself. <sighs> Why don't you just try <laughs> it? Give it a <laughs> fucking try. I'm scared. So what if they cheat? All the girls I know. You cheat on listen, everybody. How dare you? Say. All the girls that I'm having sex with have got boyfriends. Yo, to be honest with you, cheating may come with the territory. Oh. Yes. You know, you know what? You like, might get cheated on, and that's the risk you take for the if joy you love you'll somebody, get. You let them cheat on you. I said ah, this about men and women. Man, see, listen, certain things I accept. I, I, would, I would even accept that she smoke weed. She might even drink coffee. Don't smoke cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? What she are you, wanna, a fucking Mormon? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Certain things buy, I want. <laughs> certain things I don't want. He's Go to the dispensary. With Starbucks, I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? He sound like R. Kelly to me. You had to knock on the door whoa, to whoa, eat whoa, too, whoa, nigga? Whoa, 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 whoa. What? <laughs> that doesn't sound like that. That sound a little like Surviving wax. Yeah. What you mean? That did sound Why? Because I don't want you smoking cigarettes? You can do this, you can do that, but nobody talk to her. That's true. Stop giving nah, the woman nah, directions. Nah, nah, nah. Come on, it's not directions. Let Listen, her be the woman just, she wants I'm to just, be. All right, she's her. She want to smoke cigarettes, and I find that out. Standards. That's it. I don't want mine smoking cigarettes. It's Women are the only like. people that can have standards. It's That's kind of it. unfair. Wax well, just knows he's not good enough for any woman. That's why he's scared no, to get I in a relationship. That I think good that's what yeah, no, he's not. Yeah, he's not. He's not. not. Not who you are currently. Yeah. You're a good person, but you're not a good mate. You yeah. would not be a good boy. Anyone Stop would it. cheat on you. Stop it. It's just this. Why? You're because disgusting. because it's only cheating. Hold on. So I'm the bad guy because I only cheat. All right. What is the? That's the whole what point the of our fuck? relationship. Okay. Is not cheating. I'm in jail for boys. murder. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just putting somebody. people in jail for murder. <laughs> Wait, all I did killing people. Kill yeah, yo, y'all oh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Can, I, can I tell you? Because yeah. I know a lot of relationships out here, the boyfriend's cheating. How he get to still be in a relationship? Man, he be a good boyfriend and shit. Man, only I'm the bad guy because only thing I did was get some side pussy. I'm not saying what that you, that you, you, can find, all this you can find someone that will potentially allow that relationship. That's not what we're discussing. We're not talking about cheating or not cheating. We're talking about whether you're willing to open yourself up emotionally to another person. All the girls I know be cheating on their dudes. This big beastly yeah, yeah, yeah. nigga scared to love. Yeah. It's not about He's scared of mice. <laughs> and mice. Well, I'm scared so of elephants. Cheating. What are you scared more of? Love over. or mice? Love. Okay. Why? You know Hold on, love. why? Because all the girls that I... Listen, I know a girl. Okay, right? so a girl that cheats you on weak. you. Why? Why are you afraid of that? I don't know. He's afraid what does it of his say own about karma. you? No, He's what does it say about you? No, it don't. It don't say nothing about me at all because I know a lot, a lot of times I smash other girls. They ain't got nothing to do with. Okay, okay so then mind. what's the issue? We just got over that. Berman is no afraid why? of his own karma. No, we know that. If we girls know that. open yeah. up their lace and do. Did she like his ass? Herman, listen, I'm calling what you by your real name. What does that have to do with you? <laughs> exactly. I don't want that pain. I don't Herman, know. I don't, you know what? I don't even know if I even will hurt Let's me. talk about it. Herman is afraid of his own karma. The same reason he goes into restaurants and he only uses plastic utensils. Yes. Because when he used to work in the restaurant, he would take the silver utensils the and rub them on his dick, put the butt knife in his ass. Be there. But now no, he's getting his fingers in his ass. Oh, my God. You nasty. And he's scared of using silver utensils. That's why he does that. He does that in every. 
Harvey Westerman. That got, makes sense. Yes. I put used plastic. Cause I got no, because you rubbed spoons in your butt. No, I didn't. I'm moving yeah. on my balls. Stop it. You told me that you missed jail when you put shanks up there. So That's every, exactly every you second. And you cell got... phones yeah. and hamsters. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's afraid so of his own hamsters. He's done so many women so wrong right. that, don't say that wrong. he's afraid of his own karma. Can, y'all, can y'all, you stop saying wrong? Because no, you do these girls wrong. Why? Because I have wrong. sex with other girls? Yes. yes I'm a wrong. regular guy. Let's, let's get past that. Let's figure out you for real. Okay. Me for real? No, 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 no. You don't know yet. So we're going to help you get there. <laughs> the, the, okay, so you're afraid of these girls cheating on you. Why? What will them cheat on you do to you? What does it say about know, you? Because I actually like girls who be... Uh, no, no, we know boyfriends. what you like. We all know like that. girls who got boyfriends. I know, I know. But what will that do to you? A girl cheating on you, what does that mean to you? What what happens with she you? She lied to me. Then that means I can't trust her no more than I can't deal with okay, her. Okay, so then she's true. gone. So then she's gone. She's gone. Oh, that's fine. You can break up with a girl for that. Right. That's fine. Okay, but Why? Are you afraid of potentially breaking like up I, with a girl? If I, if I say you my girl, my shorty, my wifey, now I'm investing that second into you and now on. So okay. I, I lost a bunch of Sometimes investments work, sometimes they don't. You don't want to be embarrassed. Well, First of all, you didn't lose you didn't lose anything because you're not gaining anything. Yeah. You're I'm not, not in any other relationship now to gain. So now you just have all this money and you're just letting it sit there. It's in the bank, but it's not getting any interest, nothing. So why don't you take some of that money and invest it in something? I'm scared. Why are you scared? Uh, I don't even Can't know. play scared, baby. It's true. All right, so say if I get with somebody, you a bitch. I don't know. That's true. <laughs> I would say it's true. You're just scared of getting hurt. But guess what? In life, you get hurt sometimes. You know but what I'm saying? You know My what? woman has cheated on me before, but, but, you but know what, we've been but together you know 20 years. the crazy thing is? I like girls that got boyfriends, so they already having sex with somebody and I know. The so reason you're afraid why not of your girl. own karma. Exactly. You know you out here fucking other dudes' oh. girls, Th- so yeah. now you don't want to have a girl because you don't want somebody fucking your no. woman. The reason you it's fuck, simple. The reason you but fuck. But somebody already fucking my girl now. No, 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 no. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Because having sex with mine too. No, 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 no. That's I'm not your girl. This is not the issue. Of yours. The reason why you fuck girls with boyfriends is because you know you're not emotionally ready to commit to somebody. I can get out of it. And you can get out of it in a heartbeat. It's the reason why people have long distance relationships Perfect. it's like yeah I don't have to worry about this person wanting more you live in a different place uh, there's still the fear of connecting with somebody okay. and that's what I want to figure out why are you so afraid of connecting with somebody why are you so af- has have you, has your heart been broken you have the symptoms of someone whose yes. heart's been broken yeah. like severely yeah you are Sandra Bullock and fucking bird box so I, bro. So I was mm. like I'm never doing that again or I, I don't want to go I, through I the pain through. again. That's what you're going through. Yeah, I was no. so hurt. I don't want to go through that pain again. No, I no. It's not that. And hurt really, people I hurt people. That's right. not that. I'm hurt. All you doing I'm, is hurt all these other women. You can, but you got to also understand. Let I'm, the wall I'm, I'm down. Looking at it at the other side too. Like I seen a bunch of these girls have good guys and cheat on these guys. So I was on the other side. I wasn't the one who actually seen. Uh, actually, have got you hurt. been cheated on early and you got hurt? No, I ain't. Something happened early when no, you got Schultz, hurt. No, Schultz, he's simply afraid of his own karma. He knows how did, bad you know, he treats you know, people. Yeah, but, I, if, but if he doesn't know that, if, there, if there's no bad feeling that's associated to being cheated on, that he doesn't have already inside him, mm-hmm. then he wouldn't be afraid of it. He's one of these people, he has sex with these other girls, he Why feels would, bad about it. Right? He's like, damn, man, this girl just was He's with her boyfriend. Guy. I see them on Instagram. They love mm-hmm. each other. Oh, and this he be liking the picture. All the time. So see, why do you keep fucking them? It, yo, they hot. But listen. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. They are. Stop <laughs> believing Instagram. They're not happy. Right. They're not. So That's they don't they believe Instagram. Me. They yeah. want to just get like, ah, oh, just somebody just put something in me and just go. Like, and I, how you I, know I, the I don't man think I'm Mr. Lucky. I don't think I'm Mr. Lucky. The man might be cheating on her, so she's going to look elsewhere. How do we get two fingers in Wax's ass? I'm pretty sure three could fit up there. Yeah. I need somebody uh, to disrespect him the way he never gonna happen. These women. And listen, you know I don't disrespect the woman because I don't I don't budge because I don't be in a, a whole a full out relationship with them and have kids with them and get married. That's the worst thing I do to these girls. I don't do nothing to them. That's pretty oh, bad. Yeah. Lead them on. Yeah, no. that's fool stringing them fun. along. What you mean? Because I have fool sex fool with fuck them. Fun. These are grown yeah. fucking women. You Maybe if you're a teenager, well, you give these like girls like a food 20. fuck fun and then you got them. That's all girls want at the end of the day. Food fuck fun. Like where the fools come into play at? Yeah, if you long as you feeding her, you you make her have fun and you fucking her right. Yeah, you got that girl. Oh my God, you have to stop this. This, 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 this you're too oh my old for this God. mentality. Thank you, Shyla. High school listen, mentality. Thank no, it's you. not. So where, where, where are these girls that's different at? I know a bunch of these older women. They always tell me like, "Oh, I need a man to fuck me right." Like, where, y'all not hearing the same shit? Where is these women? I that mean, don't just, get fucked right? yeah. If you in a relationship, you could get fucked right too. It doesn't mean that you got to just go out fucking everybody. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you are gonna stick with this dude if he food fuck funny you right. You know what I'm saying? No, fuck no, funny. it's way more than that. I'm <laughs> like me. I'm you know a grown ass woman. I have bills, a fucking life, and a, a fucking real. career. Uh, yeah. Like I don't All know right. what you're talking about, but Lord, like you gotta add another F to this. It gotta be food. F- 
fuck fun and fingering. <laughs> and finger you out your booty. I said for girls. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think that if you would stop sleeping with other people's girlfriends, then maybe you would find your own Absolutely. and your own happiness. But while you keep ruining other people's no, shit. No, 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 I'm not ruining I'm actually helping them. Nope, ruining it. That's I'm ruining. helping them. I'm helping them. You're not ruining you. anything. They're deciding to ruin it. They're Thank accountable you. I ain't got nothing to shit. do with that. Yeah, that's, but you got But that's but, your karma. Like, I don't fuck with don't girls fuck who got married. I, yeah. I don't fuck with married women. You're helping them make a bad decision. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you go to jail for that. You, you might not be doing the drugs, but you're selling exactly. the drugs to them. Yes, accomplice. Yeah, because you're right. Because I'm like, I'm just going to get it from somebody else. It's come get it from me. I got Boom. the drugs. Exactly. Yeah. But that's on them for being shitty in a relationship, Yeah, so too. you for being a fiend. Yeah, but you just as shitty to fuck somebody else's girl. And you just as... You, I don't know about just as, but but yeah, you, you're playing a part of it. Listen. Ecosystem. And you think you know every girl that's in a relationship will have sex with another guy. Like, I'm not that kind feelings. of person. The only way that I'm... I'll, if I'm dating, then I'll talk to more than one guy. But if I'm in a relationship, I'm not about to go fuck another yeah, man. I think you're a scumbag if you do that. And yeah, I hate the girls that do it. But really you're fucking now. But, but listen, <laughs> I, I, listen, I help and I listen. I help the relationship out because she, when she go home, she's happy. They, they, but like, gotta, like she get, he get dinner wax, and stuff. You got Let me not fuck her good. Watch what happens. Here's the thing, Wax. Here's the thing. <laughs> they gonna be arguing in the house. You are gonna eventually you don't realize. I do. <laughs> oh, shit. You don't deserve I'm happiness. Helping, in a I'm helping the happiness no. house. I'm, I'm helping the house. You don't to be deserve happy. happiness in a relationship. That lady told you exactly the truth today. You need to change. No, no, your no. Ways. She said I would. I would. We'll get it if I if I change my ways. And that's basically. I thought that if she cheated on me, just turn the cheek and act like you ain't see it. Why you want to be Malcolm X so bad? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> she talking about turning the other cheek. What are you talking about? Here's the thing. You uh, <laughs> you don't realize it, but you're not attracting. Like, I how do I explain? Gonna it? Say you're not attracting. No, no, no. You don't realize it, but <laughs> <Thank> like, you. <laughs> you're you're being used. I am. So, by these girls, you're not. Right they're not into wax. They're into this fantasy of a guy that won't like them and right. a guy that's yeah, a piece of shit, yeah, etc. So yeah. you're being for all used. the women who would love to fuck a gorilla but don't believe in bestiality. <laughs> <laughs> There's your guy. <laughs> he said woman now. <laughs> they call you Caesar. <laughs> you can't make that joke. Listen, listen. Come on. on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait. No, no. So, we got to edit that out. Yeah. So, so, coming. So, <laughs> I, listen, I, I, I could probably be a fantasy to these girls and keep on moving. And they know I'm not going to say nothing. They're going to keep on moving. And I get it. I don't mind being that. What I'm right saying now. is, you're being used, bro, and eventually you gotta realize that these girls are using you for this, this like cool, wild sexual experience. And then some of these girls, they're wounded too, so they, they misinterpret your lack of affection, right? Mm -hmm. They misinterpret that, right? And they misinterpret that as worthlessness in themselves. So now they're Listen. seeking your affection because you're wait, worthless wait, as well. Wait, wait, wait for it. Just there. wait for it. <laughs> They're so seeking your wet. affection, okay? right? They're mm -hmm. seeking your affection not because they love you wax. Yeah. What they want to do is love themselves mm -hmm. because they don't. And you reinforce that feeling they got already. Listen. So now they're like, I love this guy. They don't love you. They don't. They're using you, and then yes. they get caught up in this fucking, this, this stupid thing. trap where they're just trying to feel desired. Go get a good girl that you could f share your, don't get some girl cheating on her fucking man, this piece of shit girl. Not yet. Listen, I'm, I'm, try, I'm, I'm also playing it safe. Listen, I do a balance. I smash them, but I still give them a Bible scripture. I still, I don't make them feel bad about this. I like, I like, I'm telling you, you're full of shit with that for Stop. years. Because the thing is, I build these girls up, and then they get to fly with their men. I put a lot of people into marriage, yo. These oh people, my God, passed the wax. I've been, I've been putting a lot of marriage. <laughs> hurt men a lot. deal with hurt women and have hurt kids. I built them there we up. Go. Break the cycle. I built them go. up, though. You need to break the cycle. Listen, I built these I built these relationships up. If these dudes should be fucking thanking me anyway. For why don't you build your own relationship up? Bond. Because Instead I'm of trying scared, to be dark. That's I, no scary. why? Because I don't want my shorty building another man building my shorty no, for me. No, 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 no. But then no, that, that means you're not doing your job. You don't job. have no confidence in yourself. Yeah, you don't. It, it, you have confidence not, in yourself not, when it comes to everybody else's girl, but none for your own. It, yeah. it is. It's not that. It's just that. Because he don't got nothing to offer. You know what? Know what it is? Check it to the chicken farm. Maybe. Show her your 
Chicklet Chicklet. Low Meat and Big Tims. Yeah, listen. That's wax. the name of the podcast, Low yeah. Meat Big Tims. Me, Wax. <laughs> wax. Okay. Hey, I got a little be perfect. But the thing is, I I, I, don't, I don't know. Like I, I We know. You're just sad. not willing to accept it, man. <laughs> just sad. fall in love sad, with a fucking yo. girl, bro. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's not about I've been where you love. are. I've been like so you hurt right now. I've been no, not right now. But I've been hurt to the point where like I was afraid of of having that connection with a girl because what could possibly happen is I could go through that pain again. But once you get past that pain, uh, the best advice I ever got from was from my mom after a breakup that I was like just so distraught over, and she's like, she's like, son, I hate to tell you this, but this is gonna happen many times in your life. Mm -hmm. And once I got through that first one, yeah, and I realized I could get through it. The next one, I was like, okay, I got this. It was painful, You're right. but I got this. I've Let's been here right. before. Right. And let me explain this in a way he understands. So I should just get a bunch of girlfriends. Listen, oh, you know, you know why I know. Christ. You know why you're not afraid to fight? Because you've been easy. punched in the face before. Yeah, I like that. Ooh. You know how fights go down. And his face looked like it's been punched in a few times. <laughs> <Yours too. laughs> and you're not afraid to fight. So you, yeah. it's the same thing with love. You got you to be willing to deal with that That's pain. That's what I just now said. I need to go get a bunch of girlfriends. I could just like every two weeks break up with her. Oh, God. I just break want you to get herpes man. and stop this shit. Miss, he already has it from what I heard. True indeed. Did yeah. she call? Yeah, she told. That's what I want to call. She told yeah, us. Yeah, <laughs> if she yeah. call, you better. Hey, hold hold as soon as she call, I want us to. She said, don't smoke with me. You don't have to call. Listen, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Gotta let it burn. I got, I got a new off. phone now. And I, I I used to have my records around. I got to get my records. It's gonna burn for you to say this. Just because it's a long time coming. <laughs> it's been far. It's been far. I don't even know this song. <laughs> well, you don't have to know it, but when you get it, it's gonna stick with you forever, buddy. Let Which I'm not trying to get. Why y'all listen? Would you rather a wife than something? herpes? They both gotta Come be on. there for the whole time. Bro. All right, listen, put like this. Listen, I, yo, I, I, listen I believe up, right? I believe when I get married, it's just gonna be like, yo, like, come on, let's go. We about to go get married. I don't think I'm gonna do this whole that's for This whole stop thing, treating like, girls like you're going to fucking Popeyes. That's not how marriage works. Yeah, it yeah. gotta be okay. like that. You're not like, let's go get some chicken. Let's go to Popeyes. <laughs> no, that's not listen, how it works. There's no way I'm gonna go to the mall and just go window shop. If I'm going to the mall, I'm going straight to that store and right out. I'm getting the fuck out. That's it's where like, you got that hoodie from at the mall. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> just ask. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do the same thing with that? I just grabbed this shit. <laughs> you really That's what here, man. Not, I hate her. I'm just I've asking. never seen you be like this with anybody. <laughs> this she really bro. bullies you, I man. Really to All know. the time. Why? Because you know L'Oreal set the tone early. I, she <laughs> said, I'm spitting your face. I'm spitting your, spit your fucking face. You'll yeah. be dead in the morning. So he know what it is. Why should leave this shit? This shit is fucking crazy. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, even I, know how to hawk spit. Like, but I don't I was know how we even start talking again. What? When I got stuck <laughs> in the car L'Oreal with you. was driving. L'Oreal was like, stop it. <laughs> I saw wax he, he did jump. All the way in the front seat. Like, no, Charlamagne was jump. here. No, Charlamagne was like this. Like, yo, we gotta go. <laughs> no, nah, they were trying to call Lorea people to calm before. me down. Like, Envy was like, listen, L'Oreal, you have to let him just get out the car and calm down. I thought like, she was gonna pull off while getting out the car. Why, why are you so... Um, I'm not like that no more. Shit. No, I understand that. You, <laughs> and you have actually really calm energy. I'm surprised that you yeah, were ever aggressive. Yeah, I'm not aggressive. like that no more. But like, why, why, were, why was he so concerned? Why does your name ring in these I'm streets? Because I talk, I've seen L'Oreal in action. <laughs> I, I think I saw you spit on somebody or throw no, something on somebody. You did not ever see me spit sure. on somebody. I probably threw something, threw something at somebody. I seen her throw why something on fighting? somebody or something. Why have you been fighting? What's up with that? Me, no. People, I that. feel Figure like because, you, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie, I feel like a lot of people try me for some reason. It's just like I have a target on my head or something that's like she's not gonna say anything girl. it could it be the light skin thing it's like here's this pretty little light skin girl she's not gonna do anything she's not gonna stand up yeah for i think that people be thinking that and as soon as i open my Ooh, mouth they're like oh hold on a second i way. think we picked the wrong little light skin girl so you had to like over you had All to be a little life, tougher i had no. to fight <laughs> <laughs> But for real, <laughs> you yeah, have to be a little says, tougher because they expect you to be pussy. Because I'm white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, I'm serious. But like being more light skinned, yeah, I do feel like that. That has been like a thing for me. Like people have always been like, 
targeting me. But now really? she go too she crazy. Saw. So you go extra to no, yeah. She for used it. to. I don't think she, she used to. Yeah, you know, you like you ever too. seen the Nation of Islam dudes or no the black Israelite dudes in Times Square? Yeah. And like I used to always, listen to them. But it's always the lightest skinned one who's the most woke. <laughs> right? What's like wrong the, with that? The lightest Look. one is all like, <laughs> fuck the white people. And everybody's like, you almost there. Yeah, black, <laughs> black Israelites done made it to Anguilla, bro. They, what they did? For real? Black Israelites standing out in front of the uh, the Best Buy in Anguilla. And Look, I was like, like wow. Scorpion and Sub Zero. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I be listening. They be saying some shit hey, sometimes. Okay, yeah, they be I mean, I've heard a lot. Of Get that. over here. White people are taking over. I'm like, and I, and I, you know, I dapped him up because, you know, we was talking, you know, we was kicking yeah. it, whatever. But I'm like, I. I I live in New York, like. Hey. Yeah, 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 I see y'all. Yeah, like, you know, I've heard all of this before. It yeah. might be new here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Check out Smile Bitch by Lil Duval. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah, uh, but I'm not angry, so don't make not. me the angry mm. black woman. She's not. <laughs> all right. All yeah. right. Bully and the Beast podcast. Mm -hmm. Yep. Out when? Right now. Now. Oh, it's out right now. Yep. Oh yeah, shit! Man. Let me go subscribe. <laughs> yeah, go subscribe. Uh, go, go follow L'Oreal. Give them your twitters and stuff. Star and L'Oreal. S T A R R I N G L O R E L. And um, the Bully and the Beast podcast. Make sure y'all follow that. You. Um, you don't have to follow Wax because he's an idiot. Listen, I don't care and about that's about it. Thank you for having us on the show. Well, me. This is yes. my first time. I've been wanting to come on. Bro. You never yeah. been on there before. No. They want to hear that shit. I been, what do you mean? You're so Shut jealous. Up. He's jealous. Well, but yeah, yeah. Go subscribe to Bully and the Beast podcast right now. Um, while you can. I don't know how much how long Chris is gonna stand behind this. Yeah. All right. But, yeah. but but as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the brilliant idiots podcast. Thank you for listening. 